This whole floor was like frozen this morning. Oh my God. It's crazy. The door to the IT core was open and the fan was blowing in here. I don't know. So. I'm going to do that a little bit later. It's too early in the morning for that.
606, Talk 107.3 FM, WBRP. Let's get rolling, y'all. Wednesday show coming your way right now, and we've got a busy one for you. Attorney Franz Borghart is going to be in for Legally Served uh, half an hour from right now. Got a lot of ground to cover with Franz. Uh, Going to talk about this Gabby Petito uh, story and uh, actually finding the boyfriend and charging him with homicide. Going to be talking about R. Kelly opting not to testify. Is it the right call? Got that and a few other topics to cover with Franz. In our 7 o'clock hour, uh, Secretary of State Kyle Ardwan is going to hop on board. Kyle's going to talk to us about the upcoming elections. They had to be pushed back by a month. What do our election assets in Louisiana look like in storm-affected areas? And what does that mean for the rest of us? That's coming up at 715, 735. Congressman Garrett Gray is going to hop on board. Let's talk about this continuing resolution, a continuing resolution to keep the government up and running through September 30th. Of course, September 30th being the end of the government's fiscal year. Where do we go after that? It's a budget anywhere in our future. After uh, Congressman Graves, oh, we'll probably going to talk a lot of storm recovery with the congressman as well. After Congressman Graves in the 8 o'clock hour, let's continue that discussion of storm recovery. This time on a local level, though, Kelvin Hill with the mayor's office is going to hop on board. Uh, Kelvin has been uh, our go-to. He's the assistant chief administrative officer over DPW. Uh, he's kind of been our go-to uh, for debris removal. Going to talk to him about where we're where we are right now. We're a couple weeks into the process. Uh, we've got what less than two weeks to go on that first thirty days where FEMA picks up the one hundred percent of the tab. How far in are we? Are we still looking at a twelve-week schedule? What's the whole thing looking like, Kelvin Hill at eight fifteen? Then at eight. 40 Breel Edmonds with the Downtown Business Association going to join us. Live after five is back, y'all. How long have you been waiting for concerts to return? Have you even been to a concert since uh, the beginning of the pandemic? Well, live after five is back. We'll run down the schedule. We'll talk about what you can expect or things can be different because of the COVID environment. COVID environment. It's outdoors. We know everything outdoors is better, right? We'll talk with Breel Edmonds uh, at 840. Got to start off this morning, though, talking about this weather. It is supposed to be just downright pleasant today. Overnight, supposed to be downright cool. We are looking at 70 degrees right now to start things off, which, right off the bat, that's about 6 to 7 degrees cooler than it's been to start off every other morning leading up till now. Our high today should not see the 80s. We're expected to get up to 79. You heard, on if you're listening on air, you heard Marissa Nuzo's forecast right there coming in we're not going to see 80 today tomorrow possibly friday back by saturday overnight low tonight and this is the fun part overnight low tonight getting down to 56 degrees cannot believe we're, we're, we're here it's upon us better than that no real chance of rain in the forecast uh through what i guess the middle of next week and even then it's low even then it's only a 30 percent chance of rain Now, here comes the, the real question. Is an overnight low of 56 cold enough to make it gumbo weather? Pat Fellows, y'all know him, he owns Fresh Junkie. He's been filling in a good bit while uh, Jay had to man the fort down the street at Government, uh, government Taco. Uh, Pat posted up on Facebook, Gov, uh, gumbo weather is below 50. I'm going to tell you, I'm one of those ones that the first time it gets the slightest bit cold. Slides a bit cool. I'm all in. I don't think you have a discernible, like, you can't get gumbo until fill in the blank. No. No. There's no check mark. There's no uh, checklist for this. It's a feeling, baby. And that feeling right now is fall weather coming through town. Uh, we are going to check sports in just a little bit. LSU football uh, is back at it. LSU's schedule for 2022 is out. But before we do that, we're going to have to take a break here in just a minute. Um, so let's go ahead and take that break. I know we're about a minute or so early for the break. Not a problem. I uh, want to save myself a little time on the back end uh, after sports. So breaking it right here. Coming right back after traffic to uh, talk a little LSU football and talk 107.3. Mm.
Oop. Let me go open the door for Franz. Six fourteen, talk one seven three FM WBRP. Morning with Brian Haldley and rolling right along. Sports time here on Talk One Seven Three. Let's talk a little LSU football, shall we? Yes, we shall. A couple of highlights to start off the LSU season. Uh, one of those uh, coming out of the Central Michigan game would be BJ Ojolari. Uh, he is leading the nation in sacks. He's got four and a half. Recorded two and a half sacks in the win over Central Michigan. Talking to the media, Ojolari says he's picked up great pass rushing skills from fellow teammates and coaches as well. Just looking up to guys like Andre Anthony, uh, Ali Gay, just seeing how I can take away from their game into the run-stopping side of uh, the defense. And then even with the pass rush, they teach me, they're still teaching me things because they have more experience looking on to Coach Andre Carter, Coach G, and Coach O. So it's just an ongoing skill development every day to get better. Yeah, a little bittersweet to hear that soundbite with uh, Andre Anthony now done for the season, or it, it appears for the season. Uh, Ollie Gay coming back, though, so a little trade-off right there. Offensive tackle Austin Deculus says uh, Ojolari's gotten better since first arriving on campus. Over the years, he's been able to gain a little bit more muscle tone that you see like this year compared to last year, and then his overall like consistency of all his reps, all his technique and everything is just it's going to grow as long as you – you are here and you are taking the more reps that he's been doing. But overall, he's not, I don't think he's surprising anybody. He's just living up to that potential that he was going to, that he had coming in. Ojalar is just one name turning heads on the defensive side of the football. On the offensive side of the football, it's been all about the pass game because the run game has been not so good. Through three games, LSU averaging just three yards carry, 257 yards. Uh, they have 257 rushing yards a game, though. Quarterback Max Johnson liked what he saw from the running game in the second half of Saturday's game, and this actually was kind of a bright spot. After seeing Ty Davis Price uh, struggle, to say the least, seeing Corey Kiner step up was um, a refreshing change. Um, I think we ended up figuring it out in the second half. Corey had a great, Corey did a really good job of you know reading the holes, reading the line, and uh, you know making plays. 
whether it was after contact and uh, yeah. So we're working on the run game this week and we're working on the pass game. It's going to be fun. Don't know how much of a run game we're going to see this week though. I mean, taking on a Mike Leach led team, you know, the ball's going to be moving up and down the field from the other side and your pass game is what's already working. Your run game is not on your side. So I'm a fully, fully expecting just an air show uh, this Saturday at 11 when LSU uh, heads up to Starkville to take on Mississippi State. Uh, speaking of which, da, 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 that game uh, will be um, on our sister station, Eagle 98.1. With kickoff at 11, the network pregame starts at 9. Local pregame, I believe, what would be 6 or 7 a.m. I think we start at 7, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. I'll have a, a specific time for you as we get closer to game time. While we're talking LSU football, we have the 2022 schedule. It is out. Southeastern Conference unveiling next year's schedules uh, last night. The 22 match, 2022 matchups include uh, an anticipated home game against Southern University, season opener against Florida State down in New Orleans. Uh, so things will start off on September 4th in New Orleans against Florida State, then home against Southern, home against Mississippi State, home against New Mexico. That is a jam-packed September, to say the least. They will hit the road at Auburn on October 4th, First, then home against Tennessee on October 8th. Then at Florida on October 15th, home against Ole Miss on the 22nd. October 29th will be the uh, open date. Then home against Alabama on November 5th. At Arkansas November 12th, home against UAB on November 19th. And then close it out on the road at Texas A&M to finish out the season. So that is what the 2022 LSU football season looks like. Um... There's a lot to like on that schedule. A lot to like on that schedule. Going to need Florida State to be a, what, a little more solid of a program. Get, get, just get better before next year for that to be a bigger draw down in New Orleans. But uh, I, you got to like the way the schedule plays out because of the way the Southeastern Conference is shifting. Having Ole Miss at home is uh, next year. They should just be firing on all cylinders at that point. We've got to check the Fox Business Report here in one minute before that. Can I interest you in a burger for lunch? Can I interest you in Muya? Muya Burgers, Fries, and Shakes. They know how to do it over there. I, I gotta tell you, they were in for Foodie Friday last Friday. It was just fantastic, to say the least. With the fresh cut vegetables, the buns baked fresh every day, the certified Angus beef, the Tillamook cheddar on the burgers. I mean, it just, you can taste the difference in ingredients the second you bite into a Muya burger. You can tell the difference in service the second you walk through the front door of Muya. Two locations, Blue Bonnet at Highland, Segan Lane, just of a north industrial plex. Swing by Muya for lunch today. Do what? Yeah. Do you know where the football field is? Yes. Okay, the last building before you get to the football field is the gym. New gym or old gym? New. So the second to last building before the football field old is gym. the old gym. That's where we're going to be. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there a, distinguish, is there a, a demarcation between the old and the new? Yes. There are like, two separate buildings altogether. Like, do they, cut, they have a little sign that says new gym, old gym? You'll be, able, no. you'll be able to tell. Why aren't they? Why aren't you in the new gym? How did your privates go last night? All right. Yeah, Got them running drills. Got them. Yeah, it's it's tough right now because fourth grade is supposed to still be developmental, but they know the fundamentals like they're supposed to. Um, I'm working on getting them to correct mistakes from the games. That means they have to listen. Fourth graders don't really do that too well. No, no. Oh, no. Run that way. Run that way. Stop doing cartwheels. So, do boys do cartwheels? Because that's been a thing for the girls. Well, like, I just assume that kindergarten is co-ed. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, I uh, 
I have zero level of expectation for this. It's is it a smaller ball? I've got questions. I, I know just, the the goals are only six foot tall. I like the slow jump dash. I would hope so. You're gonna have to. Um, he went to the Harlem Glo Globetrotters, and so he just wants to do ball tricks. It's gonna be except fun. except he can't do the ball tricks. Well, there's gonna be four goals out there in four different teams. Oh really? So yeah. Do they just play against each other, or how does that work? It's going to be a lot of standing in line. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think kindergarten's one year too young, but whatever. <laughs> so I was going to give you a cup, a coffee mug that says allegedly. And I thought, that's not good enough for Brian. Brian Howley deserves better. So now you're getting a Borkhart Law Firm Yeti mug. Whoa. Yeti mug that says Borkhart Law Firm on one end, and on the other side it says, allegedly. Nice. Nice. And when I say Yeti mug, I ain't talking about one of these little dick. No offense to the woman's hospital. Not one of these little ones. Big, massive one. Really? $55, Patna. Jeez, um. Oh, yeah. Spare notes, spare notes. Go big, go home. Pay cash. Yeah. I like the laser etching. I don't know what it is. Morning, Clint. Welcome in, bud. So we're Morning, Christy. Crazy. Welcome in, sweetheart. Oh, I hope Christy's listening in about one minute. We're going to agree that the boyfriend killed her, killed the girl, allegedly. Allegedly. And, yeah, morning, Eric. Eric wants a mug. I bet Eric does want a mug. Submit a question to Tech Gumbo. That's how I got mine. I looked at that guy and said, hey, I need two mugs. Can you make that happen? I didn't really submit a question. I ask him questions every week. Well, he's, to be fair... He has a show, and then he's on your show every mm -hmm. week. So, <coughs> six twenty four. Talk one zero seven three FM WBRP. Morris with Brian Haldane and rolling right along. Uh, legally served with Attorney Franz Borghardt coming up a little more than 10 minutes from right now. Uh, yes, we'll be talk we will be talking about the Gabby Petito case. Uh, Franz sits down and says, so we're just all assuming the boyfriend did it, right? Yes. Yes, we are. But is that a lot of assumption right now? They don't even know where he is. What if he turns up dead, too? <gasps> we're also going to talk R. Kelly because, well... I'm just destined to get us in trouble. Senator Bill Cassidy says efforts are underway to pass the disaster supplemental bill before the end of the fiscal year coming up on September 30th. It's September 30th in just eight days. Senator Cassidy looking to get this bill done. We can't afford to allow the impact of now nearly two years worth of natural disasters to not be addressed. He says the federal funding is way overdue. It's needed to offset the funding needs following the destruction caused to South Louisiana by Hurricanes Laura, Delta, Zeta, and Ida. Boy, that list just keeps growing. When asked about the pending action on the question of raising the debt ceiling, Cassidy's clear on what in the final analysis needs to be done regardless of what happens. Now, they give me all these, all these kind of variations. If it includes this, if it includes that, if it includes this or that, I just say, show me the bill, and I'll tell you how I'm going to vote. But I am committed to voting for a disaster relief. So that's the right answer, by the way. Don't, don't answer until you've read it. Governor John Bell Edwards does this during the legislative session a lot, and it's the smarter play. Not going to comment on something until I see the actual verbiage within it. Cassidy says there's one thing that he doesn't want. That's Senate, uh, he doesn't want Chuck Schumer to, uh, well, he doesn't want Chuck Schumer at all, no. 
Uh, Cassidy says there's one thing he doesn't want Senate uh, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to do when it comes to getting support for a disaster relief package. Schumer says, well, the only way I can get, the only way I can potentially get enough votes to raise the disaster relief is to leverage the misery of those hit by natural disasters. I hope he doesn't do that. Uh, you can hope in one hand and you know what in the other, and I'm going to tell you which one's going to fill up first, Senator. Uh, Cassidy is seeking a separate uh, disaster relief bill that he seems confident will pass both chambers of Congress. But make no mistake about it, that last soundbite you just heard is the one that's going to resonate. And it's going to resonate on the House side as well. In fact, Congressman Garrett Graves is going to join us a little more than an hour from right now for D.C. Current. I guarantee you he has the exact same concern from Nancy Pelosi in the House as Bill Cassidy does in the Senate. In fact... Don't even call it foreshadowing, y'all, because here we go. Press release from Congressman Graves' office. U.S. Congressman Garrett Graves issued the following statement after the U.S. House of Representatives leadership released a government funding bill with an undefined amount of Hurricane Ida recovery uh, funding included. It provided uh, 45 minutes to re- and provided 45 minutes to review the legislation. The congressman says, Congressman Graves, that is, says, I appreciate President Biden coming down to view the incredible impacts of Hurricane Ida on our state. The quick request for hurricane recovery funding from the White House is indicative of the extraordinary destruction caused by this powerful storm. The hurricane recovery bill includes a number of priorities we pushed, including funding for the Morganza to the Gulf Hurricane Protection Project, funding for the Upper Barataria Levee, other flood control and resilience priorities, disaster funding for our fishing community, community, a program to remu- remove obstacles in our waterways, hurricane out of recovery funds to rebuild homes, and other recovery priorities. However... The bill lacks some key provisions, including the delay of FEMA National Flood Insurance Program rate surges and thinly spreads assistance for victims of Laura, Delta, and Zeta to all 50 states. Here we go. You ready for this? At the last minute, Speaker Pelosi added a poison pill to the bill that allows the Biden administration to increase the national debt from, what, $28.7 trillion without limit. He goes on from there into the details of what the national debt currently is. And that's the dangerous part. You guys need help? We really want to help you. But vote on this one first. You guys are struggling without homes. Wait till you hear from Tanner McGee later on about what's going on in uh, Terrebonne Parish. Yeah, it stinks. We want to be there for you. But you got to be there for us first. That's going to be a hard part. So make no mistake about it. That's what Senator Cassidy is going to be facing. We got news coming up in just over a minute. After we check news... Traffic, weather, we're going to dive into Legally Served. Attorney Franz Borghardt is going to be in studio. Before we get to news, though, I need to take one moment of personal privilege if I could. I want to take just a minute to say happy anniversary to my beautiful wife, Christy. 20 years ago today, 20 years! You've put up with me for 20 years! I became the luckiest man on the planet marrying you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Happy anniversary. I love you so much, my head's going to fly off. Can't wait to see you tonight. 20 years. Who does that? She puts up with me for 20 years. She's just a saint. All right. Happy anniversary, boo. Love you. See you later. We got to check news. CBS News coming your way first, then we'll check our local news after that. Uh, CBS will no doubt have the latest on the Gabby Petito case, which we'll be, we will be talking about when we return uh, for Legally Served. Hey, don't forget to download the all-new Talk 107.3 mobile app presented by Gregory Ricks and Associates. The Talk 107.3 mobile app. Listen live, listen on demand, get what you want on demand, get all of our content via the Talk 107.3 mobile app presented by Gregory Ricks and Associates. Here comes the news. 20 years. Do what? Uh, The uh, 14-year-old. What's up, T Bob? So I get to go on Saturday from ten o'clock in the morning until six o'clock in the evening to a scout event. A scout event. We're not doing scouts this year. I wish I wasn't doing scouts this year. My my six year old 
is going to his first scalp. It's a camp out that's not a camp out. So I'm not really sure what my role is in the scout event other than to be there. Maybe to go fishing with him. Maybe to go do crafting stuff. I don't, I don't know. If I get a macaroni necklace out of this thing, I'll be happy. Don't you camp out on the football field? I have no clue. I have no idea what's going on other than it ends at 6. So we're, okay. not, sli- we're not spending the night. And I don't have a uniform. Yeah. What am I supposed to wear? I don't even know what I'm supposed to wear. Tuxedo, or at least a tuxedo shirt, T-shirt. Very nice. What good is it having a radio show if you can't wish your wife happy 20th anniversary? Awesome job, man. Thank you. It's two decades, man. I know. I know. I, I just have we, two failed marriages. I, I'm just, I'm in awe. Like, you made it to the 10-year mark? Wow. <laughs> and so we actually met five years prior to that. Well, four and a half years So you've been together. For a quarter of a century. Wow. wow. Did you just kind of know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first, first night we met, I don't think I went home. Nothing physical happened. Good Let's Catholic look. kids, man. No. I, I got you. I, I want to be clear about this. Nothing physical happened. But the first night we met, I didn't go home till dawn. Were you in like, college then? College, yeah. yeah. We were trying to watch. She had never seen Goodfellas. We were trying to watch Goodfellas. We swung by Blockbuster to rent Goodfellas. After going to Calendars. Remember Calendars? And this was after a college Good Republican meeting. Sticks. Oh. Yeah. They just don't make restaurants like calendars anymore. Thank God. We had a good calendars on per- uh, on Perkins until the murder happened. <laughs> yeah. Calendars was essentially like local Applebee's. That's all it really was. It's good. I, I like Macaroni Grill, too. I'll go there. Oh. Macaroni Grill was one of my spots. Did you like Portobello's when it was on, near campus? Portobello's was near campus? It was on Lake. Now it's on. It's in Bocage I'd, Shopping Center. Yeah, that's the only place I've known. Bocage Shopping Center. Yeah, love Portobello's now. On the way in. No, no, just the first one. So you the, may be a guest this Friday. Okay. I I threw out the beacon of who should be a person that you'd put on the radio, and your boy says, your boy goes. Danny. Danny, Danny goes, should be a guest. Dan, I think Danny has been a guest on my show. Have he? I don't know. I'll, I'll reach out. I reached out. You know who I reached out to? Who? I reached out to the soccer, women's soccer coach for LSU. Yeah, good luck with that shit. She actually is very accessible. Really? And then she actually has her own call in the office. She picks up her own phone and all that. And then I also reached out to Mulkey. I'm going to do something on women's uh, athletics at LSU. And by that, I don't mean Title IX violations. No, no, no. That's... I think the soccer coach would be a good. Yeah, she, they're number five in the country right now, yeah. though. I would. I haven't called just because I assumed everybody's calling right now. Mulkey wants to sell those tickets. She can come on Go Roo Show. No. She's gonna sell those tickets. I think it would be interesting me having two athletic coaches on. My show, and you I know what I know about athletics. I know that Sean I found it interesting could, yesterday when I texted you asking you to sign up, and you said after I'm done working out. I was like, "What? Wait, what?" Hey, bro. Working out? From? So I am signed up for the retreat. Yes, the rosary you are. one. I'm, I'm, I'm working on that one. The what? The rosary. The other retreat you or information you sent me about the Wednesday rosary. Oh crap! Did I send you the wrong information? You did, but I. But your wife, thank goodness, your wife See? sent me twenty years. Yeah, sent me the sent me the information on Axe, and in fact, don't worry about the rosary thing. Yeah, That's, the Axe thing I misregistered oh. for, and I asked her in real time, "Hey, did my registration go through?" And she goes, "No." And so then I re-registered. Okay, well I officially suck. That's okay. <laughs> Congratulations. 
<laughs> Troy says, Brian, we all have our crosses to bear while on earth. Now we know Christie's has lasted for 20 years. Funny. Funny, funny. <sighs> so, yeah, um, you're, you're going to love it. I think so. You need I talked to Mark about it, too. Mark gave me a pep talk about it. It's going to be cold, though, huh? December? I mean. So what's the what's the keepsake you get? The ring? Or what do you get for going, when you complete the, the act? a little bracelet and a okay. little cross necklace. Yeah. So My I necklace got, broke, so I got to. The cross was, was, I thought it would be more expensive for some reason. Dude, just for the meals, it's a deal. And by the way. Forget about dieting that okay. weekend. It's two fifty five. That was that was in parish. Yeah, great. it was great. Yeah. Rocco's gonna be on it too. Good. Is platinum, I believe. Don't blow it, dude. Do what? Byron goes, 20 years is platinum. Don't blow it, dude. Oh, I know. So she's supposed to get you platinum, right? Second? So she's supposed to get you platinum. Right. 638, Talk 1073 FM, WBRP. Time for Legally Served. Time to welcome in attorney Franz Borghardt as we do every single Wednesday. Franz, good morning, sir. How are you? To the, to the folks listening out in Talk 107.3 Radio Land, or if you're watching on YouTube, good morning. Happy anniversary, Brian Howard. Thank you, sir. Go platinum. Go big. 20 years is platinum. Right. Yes, it right. is. Which one is the one? Pl paper? Which one's paper? Paper, I thought, was like first or second. Look, my, huh? track mar my track record with marriages... I can't even concept my, my my I can't grasp twenty years. That's amazing. That's phenomenal. Thank you. I need to take relationship advice from you. Okay. Twenty years. All right. Don't it's, don't go talking don't, to the guy that's been divorced fifteen times. It's, it's the Dave Ramsey promo. That's yes, right. Yes. Don't want to read your book on marriage. Um. Yeah. Platinum is the twenty year anniversary. Although, it, it's the twenty year anniversary. Platinum is the twenty year, but I really think like multiple tuitions is the twenty year anniversary. Like. <laughs> Surviving, I think, guys. If I brought surviving. Home, I would have more hell to pay if I brought home anything platinum tonight. Mm. Like, at the end of the day, if I brought home anything platinum, my wife would be like, you realize the bills we have? Look, uh, I went titanium for the 20th. <laughs> uh, it's good enough for the astronauts, sweetheart. Mm. It's good enough for you. Exactly. Exactly. So, what do you want to jump in here? I want to start with this Gabby Petito thing. Oh, it's Gabby. all over the national news, oh, and there's so Gabby. many unanswered questions. This poor girl... Uh, FBI says a county coroner has confirmed the human remains found in a remote northern Wyoming along the border of the Grand Teton National Park are those of 22-year-old Gabby Petito, who disappeared while on a cross-country road trip with a boyfriend who is now being sought by authorities in Florida. <sighs> Teton County Coroner Brent Blue, you're my boy, Blue, determined her manner of death was homicide but did not disclose a cause of death pending final autopsy results. Petito's body was found Sunday near an undeveloped camping area that's surrounded by woodlands and brush, located about 30 miles northeast of Jackson, Wyoming. So, the FBI also requested for anyone with information about the boyfriend, Brian Laundrie, anyone with information about his whereabouts or his role in Petito's death, to contact them. I'm guessing head trauma. I'm guessing head trauma. It's not bullets because we would know if it was. There wouldn't be a question as to the cause of death if it were, were gone. Well, I don't think there is a question of the cause of death. He's just not revealing it. Right. So, so the problem is th is this: boyfriend is approached initially, and boyfriend's attorney asserts the constitutional right to remain silent or the fifth. Mm -hmm. And of course, constitutionally, he's perfectly well entitled to that. I celebrate that. That's my favorite constitutional amendment. What? But the the fifth. The optics, though, wait, of wait, 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 the wait. optics, though, of you pleading the fifth is the same as when you're the only one on the trip with her and you go out into a remote area with her. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Initially, no, it doesn't. allegedly, right? So, initially, it doesn't. But the number of potential scenarios that are out yeah, there, yeah, Barry might have mauled her, right? And he freaks, and, and he pleads the fifth because he's ashamed that he left her, like. Say they're on this Possible. trip. Say they're on this trip. They get into a fight. She storms off. So, 
So that's all fine and good until now the FBI is looking for him. And I'm not going to say he's absconded. I'm not going to say that he's, he's on the lam. He could be dead right now, but he's not at his home. Well, yeah, and in 2021, there's no escaping the news. You're going to see the news. So if you've not turned up just yet, you are either uh, on the run or Carol Baskin's so, husband. So there's another layer of this that's been in the national news. Yeah. Car- uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to let you gloss over uh, Tiger King. Um, and Byron on the face or the YouTube app alludes to this. There's been a pushback about the, the missing Karen syndrome that some missing women, some missing people get more attention than others. That's not really a part of the criminal justice conversation, um, but I, I do want to say that has become a part of this conversation. So bigger picture, there is now a manhunt going on. FBI is involved. The guy from uh, America's Most Wanted and now uh, Walsh. Yeah, Walsh is involved in it. I like that dude. I like it. Bro, you want to talk about taking on a mission in life that is, is worthy of sainthood? That dude, like... He took that on because his own son right. was abducted and killed. Right. I mean, to turn that tragedy into what he's done today to return people back to their own homes, and not e- if, if not that, then dare I say punish a, those who are guilty. Dare I say a calling? Absolutely. A calling. Uh, absolutely. Out of the worst of circumstances so comes ha- a, a different result. So what happens now? they got to find this guy, right? And, and didn't he like, doesn't he live in like the Florida swampy area? Yeah. So, you know, part of the, the question is, is, is he in Florida still? Where is he? You know, when's the last time the family saw him? He's, he's presumed innocent. He's presumed innocent. Right. Although the acts he does, so it's all about, right now it's all about optics because it's a national stage, right? And, mm-hmm. by, and look, you're, you're not tried by optics, but I've said before, optics matter. Yes, they do. You know. Ask R. Kelly. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, optics do matter. If you plead the fifth and then disappear, I, right. those two things combined, he's already guilty well, through the well, public eye. He has, th- there are ways you can spend that. You can say, I'm not going to make any comments at this point. Um, I've cooperate. You, you know, my favorite is we've cooperated with law enforcement. We're not making any more statements. We've already been in an interview. That's one of the things I would I'll pull into my bag of tricks of, or my my clients already issued a statement through through counsel. There's we're we're you know that's where we are. Mm-hmm. Um, the the pleading of the fifth, which again is my favorite constitutional amendment. There's so many constitutional amendments. Yeah, in you know, the U.S. Constitution. Here, here's a here's a good way to translate pleading the fifth. Tell me you're guilty without telling me you're guilty. Oh, no, it's not what it is. So it's look, exactly what it so is. So here's the problem. A suspect, a defendant in a criminal case, is in a true lose-lose position. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right against self-incrimination. Some people, if you come forward and you make statements to, the, to police, and let's say they're truthful statements, some people are going to say, no matter what you say, you're just talking to the police to save your own skin. Mm-hmm. And if you don't make any statements, then... People are going to say, well, you know, if I were innocent of a crime, you couldn't stop me from talking to law enforcement. You're in a, lo- you're in a true lose-lose situation. Well, okay, what, Skill and charybdis. What, what gives overlooked in this is the fact that however you say it, in the heat of the moment with your adrenaline pumping and trying to remember what happened word for word, nanosecond by nanosecond, and then you're asked again months later while you're on trial, you now have it as a matter of record what you actually said. Right. And any variation from that right. is therefore going to be interpreted so, as a lie. I think the important lesson here is the Fred Durst lesson. Don't do a documentary. Not Fred Durst. Uh, Robert Durst. Robert Durst. What, who's Fred Durst? Huge difference. Who's Fred Durst? Fred Durst for the, 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 the musician. Oh, yeah. Robert Durst. The Robert Durst The lesson. Jinx. The- Jinx. Don't do a documentary on murders that you may have done. Right. And then while you're using the bathroom, assume the mic is hot and do not make a spontaneous utterance of admission or confession exactly. to the, the crimes. That's, uh, you know, but look, this guy could, this guy, I could conceive of a scenario like you suggested where maybe something happened and he freaked out and he left. And maybe it's not homicide. Maybe it's something else. If you, if you were to leave a woman in the middle of the Grand Teton National Park, I think you would feel shame at that. Yeah. And that would be enough to plead the fifth. Now, that being said, his disappearance, his own disappearance is going to result in one, two, one of two things. That doesn't look good. 
It's either his guilt or his suicide. One of the two. Look, when you disappear. Now, look, I will say this. We, I don't know how much time we got. We got a break. Okay. Okay, we'll break. All right. Well, I thought you, I was going to let you finish that sentence. Taking a quick break. Checking your money now. Checking traffic. Coming right back on Talk 107.3. When we come back. I he's, do, he's back timing to. We have no, three minutes. Okay. So, so when, we, when, we, when we come back, I do. I want, wasn't ignoring you. I do want to talk about something I've noticed with the media sometimes. Um, when are you, quote, unquote, on the lam versus you're coordinating turning yourself in? There is a difference, right? So, like, and if arrest warrant issues, and if arrest warrant issues, it doesn't mean that just because you don't immediately turn yourself in that you're, you're on the quote-unquote lam. A lot of times law enforcement will get a call from an attorney, and I'll say, hey, look, my guy wants to turn himself in. Can we turn him in on Tuesday? Mm-hmm. And law enforcement will say, okay. doesn't mean my client's on the lam. Yeah. And sometimes, locally at least, I won't name any news investigative journalists, Sometimes that becomes a thing, and it really isn't. Okay. Uh, I'm going to push it back till after we're done here, so 705. Don't do it all in the nookie. Yes, Tiffany, that was yes. ba- my bad. My bad, Tiffany. And my bad for actually calling Fred Durst a musician. Byron's comment is, it just we've all figured out another way to call everybody racist. Point the finger and be more woke than the person next to you. That's the whole compulsion behind that belief that it has nothing to do with a cross-country trip. It has nothing to do with the mystery and intrigue behind it. It has everything to do with the fact that there's a white woman missing. I get to go to Port Allen City Court today. I was in Port Allen Monday. It's in Bruley on Saturday. I've been on the west side a lot lately. Look, there she is right there. No, that's not her. That's going to time out perfectly. Go ahead and hit it. Go ahead and hit it. No, hit your money now. Byron says, I think it's attractiveness more than race. It's possible, too, but it, 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 it's co- to me it's coincidence. There's no way to – I don't know that you could prove intent by the media. And by the way, this all starts with the, the woke-ass media to begin with. What is the definition of woke? What does that mean? Um, is there a, is pointing there, the finger at everybody else for every possible misstep they whoa, could have? Whoa. That's what woke means. I miss you, Byron. We need to do lunch. We're overdue. You've been to lunch with Byron? Several times. I got a man crush on Byron. So I care about the audience, Brian. I care about the, the audience. The men and women that watch our show, I care about them. I mean, that may lead to me dead in a bath, a hotel bathroom uh, to, uh, tub without my kidneys. Dead. But you won't be dead. You'll just be missing your kidney. Yeah, in a tub full of ice in Tijuana.
see Galen hits where I'm at right this. It's this has a made for TV movie theme behind it. Like Lifetime. Television for women. Six fifty two, talk one oh seven three FM WBRP mornings with Brian Haldy and rolling right along. Legally served with attorney Franz Borghardt rolling right along. Uh, Franz, you you mentioned a comment that was in the YouTube feed. Oh yeah, dude. So, I, we got to pick up here. We're gonna get to. Uh, you have an issue with the with the on the lamb comments so, as well, but we'll so, get to that. Okay. Well, you, it's your show. So where are you? Let's go with let's that? let's start by addressing the, um, the whatever two ton elephant in the room. With every time there's a missing white girl, it shows up on the news, and Byron says, "I've always been intrigued as to why some missing females capture the nation's attention and others don't." I'm guessing attractiveness plays a role, and it. Inevitably, the race card will be played here within the next day or two. To, to if, if well, it, it hasn't already, been already, already, if it hasn't been already nationally, yeah. there has been there has been pushback of why don't we care when non-white beautiful women get kidnapped, right, or killed, right? Because and I I would have to add, you would you need to ask the national media about the national media. That's the fair, national media that's who's willing response. to tell us on a regular basis what we do wrong in our lives. They're the ones that put her face in front of all of us. They're the ones that create this intrigue. And Galen says on YouTube as well, in our society, being attractive doesn't hurt. But this is a made-for-movie story. Young couple gets a van, travels across the country, then something horrible happens. This is totally a movie. This is I mean, not even like a bad Lifetime movie. This has like actual box office movie uh, behind it with the disappearance of her the discovering of her, the dif- disappearance of the boyfriend. I, so, I just fear that we're not going to have enough time to talk about R. Kelly. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a little oh R. Kelly. Actually, there's a lot. There's wrong a lot wrong with R. With R. Kelly. Kelly yes, um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to gloss over that topic either. Um, but I, I do want to put a button on this one. In that, uh, yeah. The narrative gets out in front of the story and changes everything. Now, I would ask this, though. In the court of public opinion, the fact that her face is plastered everywhere, and yes, she is young and she is adorable and like everybody's going to fall in love with her because she's got an infectious smile, doesn't that hurt uh, the boyfriend even more? Because every time you see her face, you feel sympathy or empathy, and, so, and, and so we you want convict our, him in your mind. We want our... We want our victims. We like our victims being innocent as the driven snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want the fleece to be as white as snow. Yeah, and if you know nothing makes a good story like a a sweet young lady that just went out to the wilderness to go hiking with her boyfriend is found dead after. And a while, then he it, was evil. He turned on her and he killed her and he left and he disappeared. Yeah, I mean it, it is a made for TV movie. Yeah, you know. All right, so there was one more thing we got to cover on this one before we move on so to R. Here's Kelly. The deal, real fast. On the lamb. He's so, on the run. So just because someone has not yet turned themselves in when there's an arrest warrant or where they're, they're being searched for doesn't necessarily mean they're on the lamb. I use the phrase on the lamb, uh, and I want to clarify something. Um, I have seen the media before say there's an arrest warrant for, for Brian, and it's been two days, and he hasn't turned himself in. He's, he, must be, he must be in hiding. No. A lot of times what happens is an attorney will get hired, an attorney will call law enforcement and say, hey, Detective Smith, I'm going to turn Brian in on Friday. Is that okay with you? And Detective Smith, who appreciates having the person brought to him, which is a safety, a safety mechanism for, for law enforcement, says, sure, no problem. So just because someone hasn't yet turned themselves in, just because, you know, they may, this guy may be in the wilderness camping for all we know. Probably is actually in the wilderness He's yeah. probably in the wilderness, yeah, yeah. So on some saying. level. But yeah, allegedly, that doesn't sit well with people Mm-mm. because when you're accused of murder, you should be arrested. Hey, I'm gonna get all my affairs in order, unlike my victim. I'm gonna get everything well, in line to well, make sure nothing falls through the cracks. You are gonna be arrested, but but part of it is but on your own pace. That's not that's well, that. So it's, it's the voluntary nature of it makes it unpalatable. So, so let's say you're on vacation in San Diego. Yeah. And an Wouldn't want to ruin up. your vacation and with an arrest, arrest warrant. warrant comes down for, right. for felony theft. God forbid you be inconvenienced. Hold on. Hold on. You're in San Diego. You're going to fly back from San Diego anyway, mm-hmm. and your flight's on a Thursday. And you tell the officer, hey, it's Monday. 
I'm coming back on Thursday. I already have the plane ticket. Are you okay if I turn myself in on Thursday? Yeah, that's not palatable. Oh, I'm sorry I would it's hate not palatable. I would hate for your vacation to be inconvenienced by a murder charge. Well, no. Under the fact scenario I gave, it was a felony theft. It's lesser. But but the, okay. you've already bought the plane ticket. We're talking ticket, about so, Gabby Petito. Okay. So, yeah, this is a little different. We don't know where this guy is, right? But what I'm saying is, is just because an arrest warrant is issued, it, it is not immediate. There is no, there is no realistic. Okay, an arrest warrant was issued two seconds ago. Why hasn't he turned himself in? Right. I, I think there needs to be a little bit of grace there. A little bit. All right. A little bit. We got two minutes to talk about R. Kelly. Oh, that, he's not expected to testify. Oh, I think he's going to testify. No. Mark my words. You can't. He did the. Didn't he do like the Oprah or Gail? Uh, uh, Gail King. Yeah, he did. He can't stop himself. Yeah. This guy's going to testify. <sighs> okay. He wrote, Tell me. He wrote in the closet. He did write in the closet. How many episodes was that? Fifty. I don't know. 20? Something like that. It was like three albums, I oh, think. Oh, he's. His he's so toast. So, testify if he, okay. Is this a bad idea? Yes. When is it a good idea? Well, okay. Here's the thing. If your ship's going down and you're going to get convicted and you're like, F it, I ain't got nothing to lose, mm -hmm. okay, dude, Thunderdome it. Spin the wheel. Okay. But conventional wisdom is you don't want your client to testify, especially after he did a massive documentary with Gail. Yeah. Which didn't go well. It no. did not go well. No. It, it, we agree <laughs> it didn't go well. He was yelling at Gail at one point. Can right? he be coached into saying something no. that's – okay? you can't coach that. You can't. You can't. He was probably co – look, do you think it was his idea to go on the documentary with Gail, or do you think there was some marketing PR person or an attorney somewhere saying, please don't do that? R. Please Kelly, who, who features the songs, it seems like you're ready and your body's calling. Not, not that those two should ever be played back-to-back. -back. But your mind's telling me – what <laughs> what's coming up on Go Rouge this weekend? So so, you know, you may be a guest on the Go Rouge show. Oh, really? Twenty years marriage anniversary. I want to talk. I want to have a segment about date nights in Baton Rouge. Because I'm so out of the mix. I know. That's that's you know what? No, no, no. Get, get good. somebody who's on the dating scene right now and me, and we'll do like a like a, a jousting sort of thing. Is that? Oh, crud! We're out of time. Hey, we're gonna continue on YouTube because I've got more R. Kelly jokes right now. CBS World News Roundup coming your way. Yeah, no, no, no. My date night, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Baby, I made you meatloaf. <laughs> hot and fresh out the kitchen would be the line after it's a remix to Ignition. Hot and fresh out the kitchen. So Mama ruling that body got, got every man in here wishing. I don't need to know where you're going, but you're going out tonight, right? Yeah, we're going to go to Rich Chris. Well, that's a good deal. That's yeah. A good deal. That's a good deal. Get dressy. Where's my husband? I got my hasp on already. Do you need a jacket at Ruth Chris? It's been forever. No. Okay. Not not in a pandemic, not on a Wednesday night. You're you're good to go. You're, I was told I don't even need reservations. I think I'm gonna call anyway just to make I sure. Make reservations. All right guys, I'll see y'all later. Thank you, Friday. Later, brother. You going uh going to lunch? Depends on how how fishy I'm feeling about what I'm doing for this week. Oh go, just go, eat go yeah, yeah. I think I'm working on uh, technology today, so Later, bro. Thank you. All right. Most underrated R. Kelly song. Note this down. Step in the name of love. Oh, my goodness gracious. Really? Good morning, America. Celebrating Willie Garson? He was an actor. He just passed away. He was on Sex in the City. I just didn't think he was that big of an actor to be headlining Good Morning America.
Katie says he's been missing for a week. His vacation should be over. 100%. Look, every once in a while, that criminal defense attorney has to act like a criminal defense attorney, right? Thank you, Van. Appreciate it. Byron says you just described the plot of a Lifetime movie my daughter starred in. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I got to revamp my top stories in trending because they're out of order. Not that there is an order, but. And I gotta, I'm going to get in BRPT before that. What's going to be crazy is the turnaround time before it is a movie. It's going to make you wonder if they started filming it before it happened. That the the Gabby Petito movie. Step in the name of love. All right. Seven oh six talk one oh seven three FM WBRP. Hour two of mornings with Brian Haldane coming your way right now. Thanks again to attorney Franz Borkar for stepping in for legally serve. So many unanswered unanswered questions in that Gabby Petito case and it just there's just a lot of bad optics if you're the boyfriend right now. It uh it, it leaves a lot uh, that still has to come to the forefront. Uh we've got a busy hour this hour. Our state elections have been pushed back by a month because of Hurricane Ida, but is a month enough, a long enough time? What do the election day assets look like? Can we get voting machines where they need to be? Can we get power to those voting machines? What is it look, going to look like on election day, uh, even with a month's postponement? Secretary of State Kyle Ardwan is going to join us in our next segment to talk about that. 735, we've got D.C. Current. We do this every Wednesday. We speak with Congressman Garrett Graves. 
And today, I'm going to ask him, number one, about the continuing resolution to keep the government open uh, through September 30th. But number two, everybody who needs help as a result of Hurricane Ida, is that going to have to be leveraged against paying for something else? And what's going to happen when, and I'm not even saying if, what's going to happen when you have to sign off on that? Raising the debt ceiling again or voting for a $3.5 trillion spending package. Like, if you've got to get one to get to the other, do the people in South Louisiana, will they be left hurting? Congressman Garrett Gray is at 735. Of course, we'll wrap up the hour with the outside in. Going to have... <clears throat> Excuse me. Going to have top stories and trending coming your way in just a little bit. Got to tell you about the folks over at Baton Rouge Physical Therapy. They are no stranger to the area. Been around for 59 years. They were the first physical therapy group in Baton Rouge. They essentially introduced Baton Rouge to physical therapy. And I tell you what, when you think of physical therapy and you think about recovering from a major accident or injury, yeah, there's that. But have you thought about everything else under the sun that's just that nagging pain, that little tweak Like you lift with your back so your lower back hurts. You're hunched over your computer so the back of your neck is killing you every morning. you got that slight tweak in the knee or the ankle or the shoulder. Whatever the case might be, physical therapy can help. And the only way to find out if it can help is to get yourself a free screening. How do you do that? Visit brptlake.com, brptlake.com, or call 917-9185. They've got locations in Baton Rouge, Ascension, Livingston. Six locations throughout the capital area. Get back to being your best you with a little physical therapy via brptlake.com. Top stories in trending. Let's go. The state agency running Louisiana's hotline taking calls for disaster food assistance was overrun by calls on the first day taking requests from Hurricane Ida victims. On Monday, Louisianans spread across 25 parishes reported having trouble connecting the state's phone lines that were facilitating DSNAP benefits, prompting officials to extend their hours for phone requests that day. How bad was it? Well, the Department of Children and Family Services said in a statement Tuesday they initially believed the troubles were tied to a server issue but later determined they were caused by the sheer number of calls. A spokesperson said they were averaging as many as 250 calls per second. I'm just letting that sit for a minute. They actually said 250 to 300 calls per second. Uh, That would mean 15,000 calls per minute. That would mean the first hour would result in 900,000 calls. I, there's no way. No way. Anyway, DCFS has now created a schedule for applicants uh, to call. They ask that residents only call on the day which corresponds with their last name on that schedule. Visit their website for more. The embattled head of a state agency tasked with regulating private security in Louisiana was fired during a special meeting of that agency's board yesterday. Fabian Blosch was removed from his role as leader of the Louisiana State Board of Private Security Examiners by a 5-3 to three vote. Blosch has been on leave for over a month pending a state investigation into misconduct allegations. He's accused of repeatedly harassing an employee who formerly worked as an exotic dancer at a club that he frequented. After hiring her, the woman alleged that he made several sexual advances and threatened her job. If she didn't comply, he has des- denied any wrongdoing. Monoclonal antibodies coming to the Baton Rouge General Mid-City location. Across from the Mid-City location, actually, on the corner of North Boulevard and Lover's Lane sits a large white tent that will soon be home to the life-saving technology. Monoclonal antibody therapy, relatively new method of fighting COVID-19 for people who are already infected and susceptible to hospitalization. It's becoming more and more popular. It's uh, garnering more and more rave reviews as well because it's working. 
The treatment has been proven to be effective if used within 10 days of testing positive for COVID-19. The Mid-City location opens tomorrow. Going to be open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. They can treat up to 200 patients per day. The plan to enhance drainage along Bayou Manchac at the border of East Baton Rouge and Ascension Parish will be introduced to the Metro Council tonight. The plan was designed by Mayor Broom and uh, Ascension Parish President Clint Quinmong. It's a cooperative endeavor to clear the, and snag Bayou Manchac from the Amit River to the parish line of East Baton Rouge, Ascension, and Eberville. The project would run about two hundred grand. It aims to remove blockages to allow for better water flow. A man was found dead on a sidewalk in a Baton Rouge neighborhood yesterday morning, BRPD said. Tyler Perry. What? Not that Tyler Perry. BRPD said 28-year-old Tyler Perry was found dead on a sidewalk near his home along Edgewood Drive. Police said Perry was found around 6.40 a.m. with multiple gunshot wounds. Investigators have yet to determine a possible motive or suspect in that killing. That's a look at your top stories. Here's a look at what's trending this morning. Happy Meals are about to become more environmentally friendly. I know this is the moment you've all been waiting for. They fixed the environment at McDonald's. Global warming, done at McDonald's. Why? No more plastic toys as of 2025. Issues surrounding climate change continue to gradually impact nearly every aspect of daily life, from the cars we drive to the foods we eat. Now the aim to remain environmentally sustainable in the face of climate change will result in a change to the toys that accompany McDonald's Happy Meals. According to Yahoo News, a fast food company on Tuesday vowed to make a vast reduction in the use of plastics in their Happy Meals toys. McDonald's says it will complete the shift, offering 100% sustainable toys to their entire market by 2025. This means some plastic figurines will be replaced with 3D paper-based toys that kids can put together themselves. In designing each toy, the company aims to keep the toys fun, yet environmentally friendly, and over the next four years, it hopes to see a 90% reduction in its use of fossil fuel. But you know what? I can't even do this. Paper's cheaper. End of story. That's top stories in trending. Going to take a quick break. When we come back, Secretary of State Kyle Ardwan joins us to talk elections next. Like, okay. Well, let me know if you need to vomit. Seven sixteen. Talk one zero seven three FM. WBRP mornings with Brian Haldane rolling right along. So Hurricane Ida rolls through Louisiana, and well, as would happen with uh, well, when hurricane season normally hits Louisiana, it's later in the season, which means it's closer to election day. Which means if there is a devastating hurricane, those impacts will roll over to our elections. The man in charge of running that is Kyle Ardwan. He's our Secretary of State. And he joins us now. Kyle, good morning. Welcome back, sir. How are you? Great to be with you. Thank you. Glad to have you on here this morning. So let's start with the basics. 
how much of Louisiana's, uh, I, 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 would election assets be the right word? How much was impacted by Ida? Well, we had um, two warehouses that were affected um, in St. John and St. James, so we were able to uh, move those assets over to Baton Rouge, and we've secured them and um, uh, have them protected here. And then we, um, the rest are, are polling locations um, all around the southeast portion of the state um, that are problematic and then of course uh, some registrar's offices and clerk of court offices were affected um, so uh, we're, we're working with them to uh, to get through this and uh, be able to pull off the election so that's why we were able to um, that's why it was so important to um, to delay the election was one month enough I think so. Um, I, we started our uh, tour yesterday. We went to five parishes yesterday. We're going to three more today. And so far, um, everyone believes that they will be able to pull it off. There will be some changes uh, locally, um, but um, there will be temporary changes. What kind of changes? Polling locations, early voting locations uh, will be moved. Um, uh, for example, in, uh, in St. James, we will move the early voting location from the warehouse to um, a council on aging building just behind it um, in Lafitte. Um, The polling location there will probably be moved across the street to a civic uh, center that was not damaged, whereas the town hall was completely uh, damaged and unusable at the moment. Um, And so we'll make some some changes like those uh, throughout southeast Louisiana. What about the rest of us, those that weren't directly in the path or didn't sustain as much damage? Are we going to see anything different around here? Uh, for example, uh, when it comes to polling workers, it, do they have enough down there, or, or are you able to recruit from other areas to, to travel? We, we are going to recruit from other areas to travel, depending upon the need. Um, I think we'll see a need uh, possibly in uh, Jefferson Parish uh, and probably um, – especially in Lafouche and Terrebonne. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, in the, the non-impacted areas, you won't see uh, much change at all. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Does it help or hurt that this is such an off year for elections? I mean, it's th- there's no congressional election. There's no presidential election. It's, it's an odd-numbered year. So uh, how does that play into the whole process and decision-making uh, aspect of this? Well, that was what... I'm glad you asked that, Brian, because that was a real part of making our decision um, because so many voters were impacted. Um, we were concerned about them being able to even think about participating in the election. You know, most folks are, are focused on shelter needs, um, you know, sustaining life, basically. Am I getting water, food, and, and do I have shelter? Um, and some folks down in, in Lafitte are still even living in their cars right now. Um, because there is no temporary housing for them. So, I mean, folks would not be interested in an election or even focused on an election. Um, and, of course, you know, there's uh, school board propositions, um, there's local propositions, and then there's the, the four constitutional amendments um, statewide. Um, so we really felt like it was important to delay as well um, so that voters could get to back to some sort of normalcy uh, and then focus on societal issues and civic duties like voting. Yeah, I don't really know where renewing a millage would fall on Maslow's hierarchy, but yes, not living in right. your car would rank higher. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So walk us up to Election Day. Is there like a reevaluation process from now until then? I mean, or are plans set? Like if, there are, if, if Southeast Louisiana is able to recover at a quicker clip than anticipated, can anything change from now to then, or are we are where we're going to be? We are where we're going to be because um, we have to notify voters of uh, the different changes in, in the deadlines um, and um, make sure that folks are, you know, that want to register that may not be registered or able to. Um, and there's just a lot of details that go into um, communicating with voters who are displaced um, and how they can participate in the election and getting them mail, for example. We're working um, with the U.S. Postal Service on issues of mail delivery um, to to displaced voters and and to the impacted areas uh, themselves. Um, Some have minimal service, some have no service at all, and so we're working both on the federal level and the regional level to to address those issues. So we're set um, for November 13th and December 11th, and and we'll pull those off 
uh, as best we can. Actually, communication process with the voters was my next question, because if I'm not in my home, do I know that I'm getting mail? Uh, if I don't have power, do I, you know, I'm not really bumping around looking at news sites as well. So could you dive a little further into that communication process? Is it prim- primarily based off the mail service? No, um, we're going to utilize the mail service as much as we possibly can, but we're going to go down to grassroots old style. Um, so uh, we learned from Katrina um, the way to communicate is to put up um, signs. We did it after Laura last year um, in southwest Louisiana. We put up large signs like campaign signs, mm-hmm. except it says if you want to know how to vote or participate in the election, call, and we put our 1-800 number on there so that um, folks, as they're taking care of their daily needs, they see that, then they're able to call and, and get information. And, and so that's that's how we'll do it. We'll also um, provide flyers at shelters. Um, you know, it'll just be a grassroots campaign. Uh, and we'll still use we'll use radio and we'll use um, 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 social media as well uh, as as best we can. I mean, and is- target that. Is there a way, is, is there any level of oversight here? Is there a way to check people off of a list to know that you've contacted them? No, because uh, unlike um, the last, um, unlike Laura last year uh, and, and Katrina before, there was, there's uh, really, FEMA doesn't have a tracking uh, of these individuals because most of them are either displaced inside their parish or just outside their parish. Gotcha. Um, and so th- they didn't track them. So we're, we're going to have to just go grassroots, working with local officials, um, with local organizations, um, and uh, try to contact these folks uh, on a re- very basic level. For those that might be displaced in Baton Rouge right now, waking up listening to this show, what would the message be for them as far as do they need to do anything to get themselves in order or just show up on Election Day like always? Well, of course, you can show up on uh, during early voting, as always. Um, you can also um, obviously show up on Election Day. But if you feel like you're not going to be able to make it back um, to your home in, in order to vote in person, then you need to request an absentee ballot through your Registrar of Voters Office. So you can do that online if you're able to access online. If not, um, you can call our office uh, at 922-2880, and um, we can put you in contact with the appropriate folks. What about those looking to register to vote? I would imagine that would be a tougher hill to climb right now, uh, getting that level of coordination. Uh, how do you help them? So um, they can register online if they ha- are able to do so uh, at GoVote, G-E-A-U-X, vote.com, um, or, uh, which is the easiest way because you just use your driver's license um, audit code uh, to 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 register that way. If not, um, call uh, my office at 922-2880, and we'll uh, get you uh, an application wherever you are um, and um, provide you. Folks can register at their home address but receive their absentee ballot at their temporary address. Um, So we'll, we'll, we'll help folks any way we can with that. Secretary of State Kyle Ardwan's our guest. i got to squeeze in one or two more here. I want to ask you about poll workers because it – I feel like this will be a big concern if you've got to move people around logistically and whatnot. Uh, how often do y'all take new people applying to be poll workers or volunteering to be poll workers? How often do folks step up, and do you do you see a surge in those that want to participate in the civic process when when we run into a disaster like this? We absolutely do, and uh, anyone can step up to the plate. Uh, they call their local clerk of court uh, to make application, and um, there's a training we have an online training as well, and we saw a huge increase after um, Laura, Delta, and Zeta last year, um, especially in the Arlene's area, greater Arlene's area, young folks stepping up. They did the online training, um, and so we we're really encouraged by that. Uh, we had, a, I think we recruited over 5,000 new commissioners uh, after Laura, Delta, and Zeta last year. How long of a commitment is that? I mean, if there's folks who are just like, I want to be one and done. I just want to help out in the time of need, but then get back to my life after that. That That's fine. Um, <laughs> that's no problem for us at all. You know, of course, we'd like to keep you in the system working, and some folks stay, and some folks, you know, can't work every election, and we understand that, um, and, and that the clerks work around that. He is Secretary of State Kyle Ardwan. We're counting down to November 13th. Got an extra month. 
uh, to get ready uh, for this election, and uh, it's going to be a much-needed extra month. I appreciate you hopping on board this morning, sir. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Brian. God Absolutely. Bless. You Bye-bye. too. Bye. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting walk getting up to Election Day, to say the least, especially down there. I mean, can you imagine? Well, think about Grand Isle, for example. Roads are still impassable in some places. Anything outside of the Baratera levee, like anything outside of levees right now, is going to be a, a tough road to hoe. And, yeah, no electricity in a lot of places still. And, yeah, folks are not in their homes. Difficult to say the least, but we've done it before. And that's part of, like, in South Louisiana, we get hit by the back half of hurricane season. We, we see a lot more, but this one was August 29th. Katrina was August 29th. Rita, sequentially, was after Katrina. Gustav, or I'm sorry, Ike, after Gustav. The ones that hit us hardest seem to hit us as we approach or get closer to the end of summer and Election Day, at least in recent years. I appreciate the uh, Secretary's time for hopping on board this morning. And, yeah, turnout isn't generally great when it comes to an off year. And let's face it, it is an off year. It's not like the nation's going to be waiting for returns from South Louisiana to find out who the next president's going to be or even the next senator or congressperson. It's 2021. There's very, very little on the ballot, so I wouldn't expect turnout to be great down there at all. But then you've got to counterbalance that by saying, what about the rest of the state? Everybody else has to wait on hold to find out if we're re-upping for cats? There are four constitutional amendments, though, a couple of which are about tax reform, and we need to start talking about those in the very near future. We will later on, though. Hey, before we get to news, and Congressman Garrett Gray is coming up after news, traffic, and weather. Before we get to news, got to tell you about the folks over at the Baton Rouge Mattress Outlet. They've got two locations, 4065 Florida Boulevard or the corner of Jefferson and Hoosier 2. Uh, I've got a Sealy Beauty Rest Black Label Mattress. It is, uh, it's got the hybrid, I don't like the pillow top. And, and I know this because when I went by 4065 Florida Boulevard, I laid down on maybe a dozen mattresses. Christian and I tried on a bunch of them. Just, does this work for you? Eh, it's a little soft. Eh, it's a little firm. Eh, I'd like to try out hybrid. I'd like to try out a little cooling gel. We found the one was just right for us. I mean, the full Goldilocks scenario. One's too firm, one's too soft. This one's just right. You could do the same. Try them all out. Lay down on every mattress under Mitch's roof until you find the one that's right for you. 4065 Florida Boulevard, 18181 Jefferson Highway. It's the corner of Jefferson and Ushutu. If you mention you heard about the Baton Rouge ma- at Mattress Outlet right here on Talk 107.3, you will get free delivery. Free delivery. Just for uh, hearing about it right here on this show at both locations of the Baton Rouge Mattress Outlet. So we've got Congressman Garrett Graves coming up after we take our break. Got a number of things to talk about with the congressman. Uh, number one, do we have a budget? No, we have a continuing resolution. Number two... Can we get an extension on the NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program, before a rate hike? That's going to be kind of vital to a lot of folks in our own backyard. And number three, how much are we going to have to leverage to get help from the federal government without selling our soul for everything else? That's coming your way after we check news, traffic, and weather. Uh, Don't forget next hour, Kelvin Hill. is going to join us to talk debris removal, and Live After 5 is back. We'll be talking about that next hour as well. Right now, let's get you to CBS News here on Talk 
the Gabby Petito effect, how her case is sparking interest in other unresolved cases. How her case is causing people sitting in the front seat of their car to go to TikTok to share their thoughts. No, 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 Oh, my wife puts pictures on her Facebook post. She's so outdoing me here. God, I was fat. Yeah, I forgot my groomsman cake was a Mike the Tiger as a blues brother. God, I'm fat. to make this my how can I make someone else's photo my cover photo yeah all right then are we already Seven thirty six talk one seven three FM WBRP mornings with Brian Haldane rolling right along waiting on Congressman Garrett Graves to hop on board for DC Current. I'm uh, we got a lot to cover with the Congressman today, so I'm hoping we can make it happen. Uh, Chris says on Twitter, forget Ida. What about getting FEMA money to areas hit by Laura and Delta? It's inexcusable how the feds have delayed this. You're one hundred percent right, Chris. Congressman Graves, Congressman Carter, Senator Cassidy have all said on this show that exact same thing. Governor John Bell Edwards is in Washington, D.C. right now working on that exact same thing. I got to tell you, it, it gets a little tiresome feeling like a pawn. 
Like the number of people in Southwest Louisiana who wake up every morning saying, I pay my taxes. How, how can I get help? I don't, I don't ask for much on, on a day-to-day basis, but what happened last year, kind of a big deal. And then to wake up one day and see another hurricane hits New Orleans and realize it don't matter how hard you were hit last year, you're going to get more headlines out of New Orleans than you are out of Lake Charles. You're going to get more headlines out of the Big Easy than you are out of Calcasieu Parish. And you're a year in the waiting already. So how do you how do you move forward from there? So, yeah, it's definitely a question that is uh, it's being asked repeatedly whether or not they're getting anywhere. We're going to have to find out. And that's why we call upon Congressman Garrett Graves, who is on the hotline right now. Congressman Graves, good morning. Welcome back. How are you, sir? Hey, Brian. I'm doing okay. How about you? Doing all right. Glad to have you on board to be talking. We got a lot to talk about this morning. Um, I, I got to start with, as the efforts are there to get Hurricane Ida relief, the number of folks who are saying we're still behind on Laura and Delta, they're... they're their case gets louder and louder every day. Where are we with past hurricanes? Sure. Um, well, first of all, we've, we've offered amendments repeatedly in the Transportation Committee trying to direct funds to Laura Delta Zeta recovery, the 2020 hurricanes. And, Brian, as you know, the longer you wait uh, to, to provide recovery funds, the, the, the more expensive it becomes, the, mm-hmm. the more challenges, uh, people decide to leave, uh, the, the recovery gets more expensive, and so this really is just an awful strategy to wait all this time. I'm glad that finally the White House came in and asked for recovery funds here, um, but the problem is, is that, you know, one, they've rejected every single time we've tried to set funds aside for Laura Delta Zeta recovery, finally just yesterday, they introduced the bill. They gave us 45 minutes to review it um, and, and put amendments together. It was a 95-page bill, approximately. Uh, they then ran into some problems with some of the radicals because the, the bill also included funding for Iron Dome, the missile defense system we cooperate with Israel on. Yes. And, um, and so they, they rescinded the entire bill, introduced a new bill without telling anyone, Gave us no time to amend it and just threw it up for a vote. Um, so really awful strategy. But in any case, that bill does include $1.61 billion for the 2020 disasters. Unfortunately, in their haste, the way that they wrote it, it says that any state that experienced a, quote, major disaster in 2020. Well, Brian, guess how many states there are? There are 50. Because, right. because the pandemic was considered a major disaster. All 50 oh, states God. and the territories had that, so you're going to tell me you're going to split $1.61 uh, billion among 50 states and the territories, and that's going to address recovery for Laura Delta Zeta. Not a chance. That's what happens when you try and do things too quickly. Um, flawed strategy from the beginning, and um, they're going to end up having to pay for it. Uh, we're working with the Senate right now, which, you know, as you know, Senate rules don't allow for that kind of partisan gamesmanship. So uh, working with the Senate to try to get the bill fixed to provide real relief for the folks in southwest Louisiana uh, to make sure that there's a, a good chunk in there for Hurricane Ida, which the bill does have a, a substantial amount for Ida recovery, um, and just fix some of the other problems in the bill that they caused uh, through through their haste. Um, how oh goodness, $1.6 billion spread across the entire country? I, I, I don't mean to laugh because it is really, it, it's sad. It, 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 it is, and, you know, the fact that, and you and I talked about this a few weeks ago, Brian, but, you know, after the 2016 flood, we had well over $400 million set aside. Just within one month, we had over $1.6 billion just for the 2016 flood set aside after four months. Here we are well after a year uh, from, from Hurricane Laura, and you still don't have a penny of extra recovery dollars for the, for the true recovery for the rebuilding of homes, the economic recovery and, and it's just, it's, it's inexcusable. Congress can act faster than this. In fact, you know, if, if Speaker Pelosi can throw $200 million in there for a golf club and uh, a golf course and country club in her district um, within days, yet we, we have a community like, like we do in communities in southwest Louisiana that are in need and have been for over a year and nothing's done. That just really shows you how flawed the priorities are up here. Is there... Thinking bigger picture for just a minute, is there a way to curtail this? Is there any way to get Congress to do one thing at a time where 
you have a bill come across it's like two pages long and does just one thing is that even possible <laughs> you know that's how that, that's how the rules of the house generally intend for things to happen and they're they're rules called germaneness rules I mean you can't you can't add amendments or provisions to something that that is not part of the core subject or topic of that bill uh, yet what happens is is they come in and waive those things all the time they come in and waive them as a matter of fact uh, they, they, you know, not necessarily off topic, but there's another offensive provision in here. They have a provision that says that um, uh, that, that you can effectively reprogram the 2016 flood dollars and put them toward other uh, disasters. Which, you know, the provisions like that really concern me, based on, on 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 the slow execution of the 2016 flood dollars that need to get out the door to flood victims, and they're already talking about, well, maybe we should reprogram those and give them to other people. No, absolutely not. You need to, you need to speed up your, your execution of these programs and get the money out the door to the people who need it. Unfathomable that we're still talking about the 2016 flood and dollars haven't gotten there. We're five years removed from it at this point. Five years removed, and they have offered less than $700 million out of $1.7 billion after five years. And, and by the way, this is the same program that they want to use for – Hurricanes Laura, Delta, and Zeta offered an amendment yesterday to actually move the dollars to a better program that has proven their ability to get the money out the door in the right hands. And, uh, and, and they fought us, uh, the, the Speaker Pelosi and others fought us on that amendment and used some procedural maneuvers to block us from even offering the amendment, even putting it up for a vote. Congressman Garrett Graves is our guest. This is DC Current. We do it every single Wednesday. Congressman, I, 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 don't, have a, uh, I don't have a more eloquent way to ask this question but in order to make sure we get the relief we need and the help we need how much are we going to have to sell our soul uh as, as far as well the headline from uh, your press release reads pelosi politicizes hurricane recovery aid talking about raising the debt ceiling senator cassidy has expressed similar concerns that if if we've got if we're in need and, and we show any level of desperation it's going to come at a cost a cost that's going to be long term if not permanent Look, the, the, the adverse impact to Louisiana by allowing Pelosi to raise the debt ceiling without any limit, she, she's trying to raise it without any limit, their projections that, that with the $3.5 trillion social welfare expansion, with uh, the, the $1.9 trillion bill that she did, uh, sprinkling money all over the country, giving uh, just absurd amounts of money to her, her, uh, the people who helped her in the elections, um, and plus other legislation that they've got on the horizon, that the national debt could go from $28.7 trillion as it is today to $45 trillion, which, you know, Brian, just to do the quick math, that's in excess of $350,000 per taxpayer. Um, so just an, an obscene growth. And, and what she's done is she has attached that debt limit increase, which is kind of like raising your credit card limit, uh, it, she's attached that debt limit increase to our hurricane recovery dollars for hurricanes Laura, Delta, Zeta, and Ida. Therefore, politicizing it, putting a poison pill on there. And what we told her is, look, you've got all these bills that you've decided to move in an entirely partisan nature. Your, your reconciliation, your social welfare, your, your legislation expanding all this um, uh, uh, welfare programs under the auspices of coronavirus – uh, why didn't you throw it in one of those? Put it in one of those bills that are already partisan and, and, and we're fighting you on anyway. Why would you put it on something that politicizes hurricane recovery, disaster recovery? And, and of course, there was no good explanation. Uh, just I think what they want to do is probably say, oh, look, um, you know, Republicans voted against hurricane aid. No, we voted against giving you unlimited authority to raise the debt ceiling and incur debt on our children and grandchildren that they will never be able to repay. And whenever interest rates go up because of your irresponsible spending causing inflation, uh, then the interest payments on the debt are going to be completely unaffordable and jeopardize every other function in government. Isn't it frustrating knowing the answer to the question before you ask it? <laughs> I just, I, you know, it, it, the thing is, is what happened in Afghanistan was a was a just an unforced error that was a disaster, and it was this emotional thing. Let's just do it without thinking through how do you do this? How do you do this in a way that's safe? That's safe for the Americans there, and and we're seeing the same thing across government. You just see these emotional responses 
without anybody thinking through how do you actually execute this in a way that's good for America, that's safe for our country. And it's no, it's, it's you know, this, this fire-ready aim thing where you, you don't think and you just, you just execute before you think through what the right plan is to achieve your goal. And, and, and again, that's what we're seeing over and over again across government with inflation. You've seen gasoline prices spike. You've seen this climate and energy thing where we're, 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 we're Biden administration's out there begging other countries like Iran to produce more oil so we can import it here from, from Iran and Saudi Arabia and all these other countries that Russia that we don't share values with. I mean, just th- these things over and over again, they don't make sense when you, when you actually think through the crisis at the border, uh, you know, out there effectively inviting people to come, telling them they'll fly them back into the United States to re-adjudicate their cases. And, and then they act surprised whenever you have a crisis at the border, people wearing Biden t-shirts. I mean, none of these things make sense. It, it, I'm, I'm fine. Let's, let's, reform our, our immigration process. Let's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine revisiting these topics and talking about them, but this is crazy. The, the, the things that they're doing, then they come and relocate people that are COVID positive, that are illegal immigrants into Baton Rouge and other cities. I mean, just think through what you're trying to do. They, these, these policies make no sense. It's a bunch of unforced errors that appears to be done by, by rookies. And, and this is the greatest country in the world, and you're watching it being driven off a cliff by people that just, I don't know if they don't have the experience or, or what it is to, to be running these, our government, but it's, um, I just feel like we're constantly playing defense and trying to bring a little bit different perspective to, to, to some of the bad ideas they're bringing to the table. Congressman Garrett Graves, we got to, we got you for another minute and a half. I've got to ask you about National Flood Insurance Program uh, and staving off a rate hike. Uh, I see you're getting some, uh, some cooperation from New Jersey and the other side of the aisle. Where are we at here? Yeah, this is uh, it, it's it's really good to, to to find some bipartisan issues. Congressman Pascarell and I, he's a Democrat from New Jersey. Uh, he and I led a, a letter with about forty members of Congress. I believe Congressman Higgins and Congressman Scalise and others joined, um, and and just asking Speaker Pelosi uh, to support our amendment to delay the implementation of these huge rate spikes. Brian, you got to think about it. these people just lost their homes, and now they're going to have FEMA come in and say, "Hey, you have to pay." Uh, your, your flood insurance rates went from 500 to 5,000 dollars a year. Uh, really awful. This is supposed to go into effect starting on October 1st uh, for new policies, new home purchases, and it's supposed to go into effect on April 1st next year for those with existing policies. Uh, we've seen multiple cases where there'll be a tenfold increase in insurance rates for folks in Louisiana. It's unacceptable, especially on top of the hurricane mess that we're dealing with. Uh, so we're we're pushing for. Delays of this implementation, obviously, we just got a few days left, but our coalition's building, and, and obviously some of the absurd rates that they're talking about, um, it, it's getting a lot of attention, and, and we're getting some traction on our efforts. Is this, so kind of reading the tea leaves here, this does sound like something that is walking towards a positive result. It, it is, although yesterday Speaker Pelosi did block our amendment that was going to legally, you know, through, through the, the law we were working on, through the bill we were working on, it was gonna. It was gonna force a one-year delay and force a whole bunch of reports to look at the actual impacts, the things they haven't considered yet. Um, so she did block that, but we have still got a strategy. We're working, not not um, pessimistic yet. We're got a strategy. We're getting some traction, and uh, so so uh, remaining optimistic. We're gonna get this thing delayed uh, starting on October first. Well, in the interest of not talking to the pitcher in the middle of the no hitter, I will not ask any more questions about that. <laughs> We are just straight up out of time. He is Congressman Garrett Graves. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Have a good week. Talk to you next week. 751 and a half at Talk 107.3 FM. We blew right past your money now. I had to ask about an FIP because, really, that's where our money's at and will be in the future as well. Quick break. Check in traffic. Coming back with the outside in next. He was on fire. Nope. I left my juggle. I usually put it in the freezer for a little while, kind of get the. But that's a light. Oh, it's no reason it shouldn't be hearing me. You-
usually put my jug of my gallon jug in the freezer for a little while, get a little, you know, crushed ice, little crystals in there. Yeah, I left it in there overnight. So I opened it up this morning to just a gallon hunk of ice. How much does that weigh for you? Uh, I don't know, three feel, pounds. However, I, it weighs the same as a gallon of water. So I feel like it's just that much worse though, because it's a solid. Maybe I'm thinking of it wrong. I mean, you wouldn't want to be hitting the head with it. No, definitely not. That wouldn't be fun. So. But yeah, filled the coffee pot with hot water, then poured the coffee pot of hot water over the top of it, just kind of melted down a little bit. It's going to go back. Seven fifty four. Talk one zero seven three FM. WBRP. Hour two of mornings with Brian Haldane rolling right along. Thanks again for Congressman uh, Garrett Gray is hopping on board for DC current dude. He was on fire, on fire today. Whew. A lot going on. A, a lot going on, and it's it, it's it's a tough spot to be in when you got to be in front of four hundred thirty four other congresspersons hat in hand, and there is no ounce of empathy there. It's just a matter of what can I get? How can I best deal this? It sucks. And that being said, this is where we're at. So, yeah, anyway, next hour, uh, Kelvin Hill, the, uh, the go-to man, the guy we've been talking with about debris removal in Baton Rouge. It's about time for an update. We haven't had Kelvin on for a little bit. He's the assistant chief administrative officer over DPW. So all those piles of branches and leaves and what have you out by your curb, what's the time frame looking like on this? Are we ahead of schedule or are we behind schedule? Is today's pleasant weather really going to ramp things up? The answer to those questions and more on the next episode of SOAP. Right now, though, it's time for us to step out. You totally didn't get that reference at all, did you, Jake? No. No, what? I wouldn't think so. It was a TV show from the early 80s. It, don't worry about it. Uh, okay. It's time for us to step outside of East Baton Rouge Parish for the outside in. You see, soap was a sitcom that we made fun of soap operas. Really Billy, getting into this. Billy Crystal was in it. <laughs> nah, we don't have to. We can move on. Uh, we've actually got to start off in Orleans Parish where the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Well, it was yesterday. The roof was on fire. Flames and smoke were seen billowing from the roof of the Caesar's Superdome. Wait, Caesar was Roman. Rome is burning. 
Yeah, that worked out. Uh, the fire was spotted a little a uh, little bit after 12.30 in the afternoon, under control shortly before 1 p.m. ASM Global. The company that manages the venue said the fire began in a gutter tub that runs along the base of the roof. The fire was reportedly caused by a pressure washer that caught fire and spread to the gutter. Workers were washing the roof this week ahead of repainting. It is a gleaming white uh, Caesar Superdome. Over to St. Landry Parish, the chief of police in the town of Port Barry apparently has COVID. Chief Dion Boudreau took to Facebook to say he tested positive for the virus after seeing symptoms Sunday night. He added his youngest child is also sick, said sure it's going to pass around through the household before they're all done with it. Boudreau said he wanted to inform those who may have been in close contact with him, uh, so he did so via Facebook. Down to Terrebonne Parish, State Representative Tanner McGee is looking for more help from FEMA. McGee told a legislative committee on Monday that 13,000 homes in Terrebonne Parish have been destroyed or significantly damaged. He says 68% of residences along the east-west dividing line of the parish are not habitable. Owners are working through the difficulty. Uh, he, said those, uh, gathered, he said to those gathered, quote, we saw people living in tents. That situation hasn't changed. We saw people using the rubble to build their own makeshift structure. Should line th- We're going to get Tanner McGee on before the week's out just for follow-up on that. Levingston Parish has some new rules when it comes to river recreation. After a tubing season that saw two deaths and a few dozen rescues, the committee tasked with making things safer out on the water has their first set of regulations. Three new requirements mainly. Mandatory life vests for all tubers and other river goers, signage along river routes, and an activity-specific educational video. Got to watch the educational video ahead of time. Uh, those that are running this and coming forth with those ideas said this isn't the end, but you didn't want to let the perfect get in the way of the very good. So that's where they're introducing things. Got to close out in West Feliciana Parish where the sheriff's office is investigating a murder-suicide. According to a statement put out on Monday, St. Francisville Police and West Feliciana Parish Sheriff's Office responded to a 911 call about a domestic disturbance on Ruth Street. Uh, that led them to 70-year-old Peggy Rayburn and her estranged husband, 63-year-old Marshall Rayburn, both deceased at the scene. Here comes CBS News. Tiffany said, yeah, kids saw the pics, didn't believe it was me. Ah, yeah. Chrissy looks gorgeous, though. Still does. Cool. All right, I'll have some help. Good. Yeah, yeah. I ran super long in that. 
I thought the soap thing was funny though. That's why I did it. So. No, it's that's why it's funny. His like. So I could have gone on to make other references because of the cast of Soap. Like, um, Robert Guillaume was Benson. You have no idea who that is either, do you? You can keep talking. I know. The thing is, is I'm going to catch a draft because it's just going to fly right over right. my head. Right. Robert Guillaume was Benson. You also know that Benson was a spinoff of Soap. Okay. Um, let's see. Richard Mulligan was Burt. What was Burt's last name? Anyway, Richard Mulligan went to star in Empty Nest. Which was a spinoff of Golden Girls. Have you at least heard of Golden Girls? Yes. There you go. I have heard of Golden Girls. Catherine Helmond was, um, oh, Jessica Tate. She was also Deborah's mom in Everybody Loves Raymond. Mm, Heard of that show. Okay. We're getting somewhere here. You have no idea who Catherine Helmond is, though. Like, you couldn't, if I showed you a lineup of five women and Deborah's mom was one of them, you wouldn't be able to pick that out of a lineup. I know Stacy's mom. She's got it going on. She does. Billy Crystal. Do you know who Billy Crystal is? That name does sound familiar. Oh, my God. Anyway, that was soap. And every... So they were making fun of soap operas, so there were always cliffhangers. Ah. Oh, wait. Let me... I don't want you to miss this. Don't be distracted. No, I got you. So... Nailed it. Every episode had... Uh, um, cliffhangers and the announcer who was Rod Roddy who I believe was the announcer on Price is Right for a billion years um, he would end every episode with you know uh, will Jody's family accept him in his uh, w- with his announcement uh, will Bert turn the other cheek and look the other way all these questions and more will be answered on the next episode of Soap yep. and then they play the uh, theme song I think I've heard that kind of outro to I can't even give you a number of how many TV shows. Yeah. Well, that was the uh, the one that initiated all of them. Find out next time on Big Brother. Yeah, all those stole it from soap. Or Dragon Ball Z. That's not a thing. <laughs> Something for my generation, I guess. No, I know what Dragon Ball Z is. I would hope so, at least. It's comes on Saturday nights on Adult Swim. Hmm. Let's get our three on. You said Mathurns and Mathurns in complete collision. Let's see if they got anything going on in Facebook before I'm I'm sorry, YouTube, you can't hear any of this music, but I'm just it's it's a vibe. Alright, I'll see y'all later. Eight oh five coming up on eight oh six to talk one oh seven three FM WBRP hour three in mornings with Brian Haldane coming your way right now. Brian here with you. Jake Barty producing uh got a busy hour. Uh Kelvin Hill, the assistant chief administrative officer in the mayor's office. He uh, he's the assistant chief administrative officer over DPW. He is going to join us in our next segment to talk about debris removal. We're a couple weeks removed from Hurricane Ida. I know there's a lot of houses that still have their debris stacked up outside. It's a process. Where are we in the process? How much longer are we on the clock for FEMA to pick up 100% of the tab? And uh, where will we be at when that clock runs out and moves to the 75-25 split? Kelvin Hill joins us in our next segment. Briel Edmonds uh, is with the Downtown Business Association. She's going to join us at 840 because Live After 5 is back. I got to tell you. If it's not enough to wake up on a day like today, the birds are singing, the air is crisp, dare I say crisp, yes, the weather's going to be fantastic. As if the weather weren't enough to get you just whistling zippity doo da. Live after five is back, baby. Outdoor concert, oh, it's going to be prime. There's going to be low humidity. Temperatures going to be in the low 70s before the sun goes down. In the 60s by the time the concert's over with, oh, could not write a better script for the return of Live After Five, and oh, how primed are you for it? Just to get outside and enjoy things. You know, it's, it's all right, let me regroup here. Game day on LSU's campus, I had no idea 
how much I was going to want to go see uh, the band playing at, at Tiger One. The, the the band that plays outside the PMAC every single week. Rock and Doopsy was the first act this year uh, for, for, for the tailgating concert. And I was just hyped to go see that. See people out there dancing, having a good time. Outdoors, so you know we're a little bit uh, a little bit safer, as it were. It's good stuff. Hey, we're going to get you to this day in history in just a minute. But first, I got to tell you about the folks over at Mathern Supermarket. They've got two locations: downtown on Third Street, corner of Nicholson and Skip Bertman Drive. I was a little bit remiss yesterday. I did not get by Mathern's for lunch. I really wanted to get by Mathern's for lunch. Why? Tamale pie. Yeah, that's a thing that happened in real life yesterday. Tamale pie. Every day, I tell you what, follow Matherns on Facebook because every day, uh, I guess around 10 o'clock in the morning or so, thereabouts, maybe a little bit sooner than that, they post up their lunch specials. Yesterday was jambalaya and tamale pie, stuffed bell peppers as well. But every day they'll post up their lunch specials. If you don't lunch, have lunch plans, swing on by. Like yesterday was jambalaya, tamale pie, and stuffed bell peppers. The day before that, well, it was Monday, so obviously red beans was on the menu. So was chicken stew. And they mix it up every single day. That's Mathern's Market on LSU's campus right across the street from Tiger Stadium. I tell you every day about downloading the app to get your grocery shopping done. Yes, that's super convenient. I tell you to stock up on your craft beer before game day. And, oh, by the way, it's important to do it before game day because it's an 11 o'clock kickoff. You don't be running around at dawn trying to snag as much beer as you can. Get it done beforehand with Mathern's Market on the corner of Nicholson and Skip Burtman Drive. All right. Kelvin Hill's next segment right now. Jake takes us back in time with this day in history. What you got? Starting things off in 1692, the Salem Witch Trials, the last people hanged for witchcraft, eight in the U.S., 19 hanged overall. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't gloss over that. Turn the bump up just a tad. Don't gloss over that. Eight in the U.S., 19 overall. That means 11 were killed outside of the U.S. That would be correct. That's my math, and I'm solid. Why do we ever hear about that? I don't know. I... Honestly, we, all we ever hear about is the Puritans and blah, 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 blah. Until it's, now, that's all I've heard about. Yeah. No, 11 of them. Iced. With no fanfare. Mm-mm. What a shame. You wouldn't really expect to have fanfare for a good hanging. No, though. probably not. Didn't, uh, doesn't it like... Uh, if you, wait, kill, hanged or burned at the stake? Hung. Yeah. Really? All right. Didn't... <sighs> they said you was hung. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 1699. It's from Blazing Saddles. I know that. I, yeah, I get that one. All right. Okay. 1699, people of Rotterdam strike over high cost of butter. As they should. As they should. Yeah. 1912, we're going way, way ahead now. Philadelphia second baseman Eddie Collins becomes only player in MLB history to steal six bases in one game for a second time. Really? Really? It was good. Ricky Henderson didn't do that? Well, we maybe we might get to it later on. Maybe, maybe. 1970, U.S. President Richard Nixon requests 1,000 new FBI agents for college campuses. All right. 1976, TV drama Charlie's Angels debuts. <sighs> yeah, Charlie's Angels, which was great as a TV drama. Mm-hmm. Eh, not so much as a movie. Or series of movies. Swiftly moving on, 1989, yeah, Baywatch, starring David Hasselhoff and Pamela Anderson, debuts on NBC. I appreciate that you led with the Hoff well, and not Pamela Anderson. I mean, it's the Hoff. I know. It was in the SpongeBob movie. I ugh, you just <laughs> ruined your own credibility. You were slowly building credibility, Jake. <laughs> Wiped away. 1994, Friends TV sitcom debuts. We're in that fall. We're in that fall season now. Mm-hmm. All the TV shows will be coming out. Friends still a staple. And we're not done there. Two thousand and four, a decade after Friends, Lost, created by J.J. Abrams. Never got into it. I'm like the Me only either. one. I, well, okay, good. Welcome to the party. I heard it's well. I don't know. My own thoughts on J.J. Abrams as a writer. We'll go into that. Yeah. Maybe one day later on. But that's we're not why I'm late. here. Yeah, Two thousand and nine, 
crime drama NCIS LA premieres? The first NCIS. I think so. Yeah. I've never gotten into that series, to be honest. There was one out of New Orleans. It starred the guy from Quantum Leap. I heard uh, people didn't like that one. Steven Weber was on the one out of New Orleans, NCIS New Orleans. Steven Weber, who uh, our conversation with him is available at talk mm -hmm. Uh That'll do it for historical events from me. I mean, aside from 2001. What happened on 2001 on this day? 20 years ago today. I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary. Pick oh. up on the context clues, man. Come on, I'm sorry. Once again, happy 20th to my bride, Chris. Congratulations yes, to you thank and you. your lovely wife. That will conclude historic events. Now we'll get it over to the birthdays. First up, you may know him as Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter, but Tom Felton turns 33 today. Jeesh. That makes everybody feel old. Joan Jett turns 62. Yeah, saw that. I do know who that is. Tiago Silva, he's a soccer player. He turns 36. Very good defender. Andrea Pacelli turns 62 today. Happy birthday to the legend. And then uh, Hassan Reddick. Yeah. 27 today. Saw that one, too. That'll do it for birthdays for uh, me. I got, I got so many more. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Okay. Him. First of all, you were mentioning stolen bases. Happy birthday to Vince Coleman, former Cardinals outfielder. Mm -hmm. uh, legendary base stealer as well. Say, child of the 80s. So it was all Ricky Henderson and Vince Coleman for me. Those guys were dynamite on the base pass. While we're talking 80s baseball legends, Wally Backman's birthday is today. Now, Wally Backman might sound like a completely obscure birthday to reference. He played for the Mets in 86 when they won the World Series. He is now a legendary minor league baseball manager. Go to the YouTubes. If you're already on YouTube, stick around until the end of the show, then do this. Go to the YouTubes and look up Wally Backman ejection. You are going to find the most epic 12-minute video of your life. Bats are thrown. Balls are thrown. Dirt is kicked. More F-bombs than Scarface. It is amazing. These are 12 minutes that you're never going to get back, and you're going to appreciate having invested that time. Happy birthday, Wally Backman. Also, I like to keep a little LSU flair on this. Happy birthday to Ego Ferguson. Now a former Chicago Bears defensive tackle as well, LSU Tiger Ego Ferguson. And Saints legend Zach Streif. Mm, happy birthday to all Did you have Scott guys. Bayo? I'm sorry? Did you have Scott Bayo? I did not. Charles in charge. Birthday today. Happy birthday to all those mentioned. Now let's get to the deaths that happened on this day. Only had one to knit, uh, to list. Excuse me. Uh, Yogi Berra, 2015 Aww. is when he passed away. Wow, Yogi Berra's been gone for six years. Mm -hmm. I mean, legendary catcher, even more legendary quotes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Google Yogi Berra quotes during the break. You're gonna love it. Will do. Wherever you go, there you are. I'm guessing that was one of his quotes. Yeah. That's very philosophical. I know. I feel like I've become a new person afterwards. That'll conclude the deaths. We'll get right to the holidays. First up, we have Chainmail Day. No. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Dear Diary Day. Okay, that's fair. Hobbit Day. Yeah, which like is that. weird because Tolkien's birthday was the other day. Yeah, that's... I, <laughs> I feel like they're late. Yeah, that's confusing to me. National Elephant Appreciation Day. I mean, can't, can't not appreciate a good, you know... Shout out to the elephants, I guess. National Girls' Night In Day. Okay. And National White Chocolate Day. Gotta love that. That whole day dedicated to Jason Williams. That's fantastic. This day in history. Good me. job, Jake. Eight Thank sixteen. You. We're super late for a break. When we come back, assistant assistant CAO over DPW. That's a lot of letters. Kelvin Hill joins us next. I have to look up that 12-minute video. What? Who is it? Do it after the show, but yes, you do. I'll watch it later, but I just yeah. want to get Wally it. Wally Backman. Wally Backman. Ejection. Eject yeah, yes. that was the first thing that came up. Yeah. All right, I'm going to save that to my watch later. Cool. <clears throat> I'm... There's a six-minute version of it as well. 
Oh, he's so good. I could watch this over and over and over again. No, I need complete collision. I'll get to it on the back end of this. I can't get enough of that. Eight nineteen talk one zero seven three FM WBRP ran a little long in that first segment of the hour. Time to dive right into debris removal. Kelvin Hill joins us now. Kelvin, welcome back to the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing great this morning. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. The air is crisp outside. We know fall weather's coming. Everybody's a little fired up, right? Absolutely. Tell you who's fired up is the guys driving the trucks right now, picking up debris all around Baton Rouge. They can use this reprieve as well. Uh, I'm seeing them everywhere I'm going. Are we getting anywhere? Where are well, we with debris removal? Oh, we're making great progress. We picked up almost 250,000 cubic yards of debris. Uh, our initial estimate was about 400,000 cubic yards. So we're doing extremely well in the first uh, two weeks. Okay, so we're about midway through that FEMA deadline or that deadline to get everything paid for fully by the government. How close are we going to get to that? Because I thought this was going to be like a 12-week process. Yeah, we're pushing very hard to try to get everything 100% covered. Mm -hmm. So um, we think there's probably another 250,000 cubic yards or so of debris to, to collect. And as you know, when we finish this first pass, there'll be more stuff that comes out, and we'll probably do another pass or two to be sure we get everything. What's the schedule looking like to finish the first pass? Um, we think uh, this first pass will get done probably by the end of the month. Okay. Okay, so one full pass that's totally on the Fed's dime at that point. That's that's a good start, to say the least. Everything else would be kind of on the individual homeowners at that point for not getting out quick enough. Uh, no, not really. Oh. Uh, we'll, we, if we don't get everything covered under the 100%, um, we'll go to a, a cost share of 75%, 25%, but we will still continue to collect the debris until we get it all up. No, no okay, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm... Maybe I misspoke a little bit. When I said it's kind of on the homeowners, that the feds aren't picking up the full tab. It'll go 75-25 next and then continue to scale down from there. But, it, I mean, if, we're, if we as a city parish are almost halfway through right now, um, are we still looking at 12 weeks or does it look a little bit shorter? No, the target is still 12 weeks. Okay. Uh, if we can get it done before then, we'll, we'll be glad to do that. But uh, we, our initial estimate was 12 weeks, and it looks like uh, – you know, it might take us to 12 weeks to get everything done. What kind of reports are you hearing from, from those that are removing the debris? Is everything in order right now? Is there, is there anything that homeowners aren't doing that they should be doing? Uh, we really haven't heard a lot of uh, complaints, if you will, from our debris collectors. They seem to be moving pretty good. We've got a total of 88 units out on the roadways right now, so almost everywhere you look, you'll see a big tandem truck pulling a trailer, uh, either full full or collecting. So uh, that seems to be going well. Let's talk a little bit about the route for the first pass and everything. What went into this? Was it a matter of – how did you all map it out? Let me just ask you that quickly. 
Well, we'll have a GIS system uh, where we'll have all the roads in the parish uh, mapped out in GIS. We just created zones that uh, kind of were reasonable uh, for, for across the parish. We've got 13 zones on the uh, south side of uh, Florida Boulevard, and we've got 19 zones on the north side of Florida Boulevard. So it, it worked out to be about balance. All right. Now, when mapping that all out, was it based? Was there any emphasis given to areas of town that were hit harder? Well, I think the the way we looked at it was to map the zones so we could route the trucks in a way that was efficient. Gotcha. Gotcha. Does it? I, I guess it wouldn't make a difference how much they're picking up at each stop, just so long as they're covering as many stops as possible. No, it doesn't really matter what's out at each stop. I mean, they're going to pick up everything. So what really matters is how efficiently can we route them through the parish so it could be done as soon as possible. I want to take you back to the question about what the drivers are reporting. I'm assuming that if there's no like serious issues or whatever, um, everybody's kind of falling in line with keeping your woody debris separate from your like dead appliances, separate from your recycling, separate from your regular garbage. Have we seen anybody, you know, not following what they're supposed to be doing in that regard? Well, that's certainly the message that we put out there. We, we've seen a couple of piles that have been mixed, which creates uh, some issues and concerns for collection. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, people have been pretty, pretty diligent about keeping their debris separated so it can be collected. Now, the number of trucks that are working out there, does that stay the same after the first pass that is, as it is on the first pass? Yes, our plan right now is to keep the number of units uh, the same until we get get complete. What am I missing here, Kelvin? What else is in, in store for the debris pickup that folks need to know about? Uh, nothing really. It's pretty straightforward. Put it out there. We'll pick it up. He is Kelvin Hill, the assistant CAO for DPW. We've been leaning on you a lot for the debris pickup updates. We appreciate it, man. We'll talk in a couple weeks. Okay. Sounds All right. good. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Kelvin Hill with the mayor's office. Uh Wow, 250,000 cubic yards picked up so far. They're at roughly the midway point. Um, we're only a few weeks removed from the storm. We're only two weeks into the, to the debris pickup. So, progress. I'll take it. 825 at Talk 107.3 FM, WBRP. Um, we're going to shift gears and talk about a couple of other news stories here in just a minute. I do have to tell you about the folks over at Complete Collision Center, though. They've got two locations, one on Plank Road and Zachary, 19511 Plank Road and Zachary to be exact. It is um, also to be found at 9848 Perkins Road. That's Perkins just east of Blue Bonnet in Baton Rouge. What Doug and his team do over at Complete Collision is a little bit different than what you're going to find at a number of other shops. A number of shops have a deal hammered out with the insurance company, which essentially means the insurance company is the customer, not you. You are in charge. You get to determine where you're going. You get to determine who it is that repairs your vehicle should you get into an accident. Doug makes sure that his team is up to speed on fixing your car safely. Not just quickly, but safely. Certified by more than a dozen major car manufacturers. I've got the list right here, actually. Ford, Honda, Acura, Nissan, Infiniti, Hyundai, Kia, Fiat, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. All of these car manufacturers have signed off on complete collision. All these car manufacturers, the people who built the cars, say complete collision is the place to go to get it fixed. And the reason that's important is because your car is built with certain safety features that you don't see on the surface redundancies beneath the surface, crumple zones that are built in to keep your family safe in the event of an accident. If those redundancies and crumple zones aren't put back to factory standard, the next accident is going to be that much worse because the safety aspect that you don't see, it's not part of the aesthetic, the safety aspect is not put back where it's supposed to be. That's what they do at Complete Collision Center. Check them out online, completecollision.com, completecollision.com. Don't let who you choose to repair your vehicle be your second accident. Check out CompleteCollision.com. All right, Mid-City Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge General, Mid-City. Corner of North Boulevard and Lover's Lane starting tomorrow. Got the press release from the Baton Rouge General right here. Monoclonal antibody infusion site coming to Baton Rouge General, Mid-City. 
The Louisiana Department of Health is opening a monoclonal antibody infusion site at Baton Rouge General. Going to open September 23rd. They will operate seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. The capacity to treat 200 patients per day. Site's located in the parking lot at the corner of North Boulevard and Lover's Lane. You can't miss it. It's a huge white tent. A physician referral is required to receive the monoclonal antibody treatment. To be eligible, you have to have tested positive for COVID-19 and have had symptoms for 10 days or less. 10 days or less. And you also have to fit into one of the following categories. I saw the news story that it kind of glossed over a lot of the individual stuff. Like you got to be 65 years old or older, have a BMI of uh, more than 25. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, BMI higher than 25 kilograms over M2. I don't know. I hate BMI. If your BMI is higher than the 85th percentile, then you're in. Currently pregnant have a medical condition including chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Down syndrome, dementia, liver disease, chronic lung disease, sickle cell disease, or immunosuppressive disease. A current or former smoker, a history of stroke or cerebrovascular disease, current or history of substance abuse, and have a medical-related technological dependence. I shouldn't have said and. Or have a medical-related technological dependence. If you fit into any of those categories, all you had to do is check one off of that list and you're eligible, well, plus the doctor's referral, and you're eligible for monoclonal antibody treatments. Why 10 days or less, you ask? Well, because once you're through with 10 days, you are where you're going to be. You should be on the back end of it by then. If you are still that bad 10 days in, you're probably going to be in the hospital anyway. The thing about monoclonal antibody treatments that we've, that we've learned so far, and I've learned about this in the Medical Monday segment simply by talking to Arlie the Lake. I've learned about this by talking with Auctioner and Baton Rouge General about this. The earlier the better, because if you let the antibodies work before, before COVID's really in full gear, you can get a lot more done. But along with that, also learn that if you are vaccinated already, the antibodies do a little, the monoclonal antibody treatment is less effective, but still effective. That sound, might sound backwards a little bit, but that's the way it plays out. It's less effective, but still effective. You don't want symptoms. You don't want bad symptoms to take hold before you do something. So, and these antibody infusions, they are a game changer in that there's an added weapon in the arsenal in the fight against this pandemic the ability to step in and say it's not just masks and vaccines should you find that you get covid this can help you out as well do we have time to get to the living's parish thing we do not all right we might wrap up with the living the headline reads after summer of rescues and drownings living's parish outlines and ordinance for river safety going to get to that in the last segment of the show Going to take a quick break. When we come back from that break, let's talk live after 5. It is back as of this week. What's in store for us? Breel Edmonds joins us next. Here comes news. <sighs> Tiffany says, Dragon Ball Z and SpongeBob. This is what Jake brings to the table. LOL. <sighs> yes. I'm glad I can. <laughs> he will grow. I'm he glad will I can grow. contribute. <laughs> he is but a seedling right now. Hey, if it's any difference, which it probably isn't, it's the first SpongeBob movie, the one that came out in like 2006. It doesn't. It, it, you're digging a deeper hole. I mean, all good. Uh, exactly. Don't even get me started on Star Wars.
Galen says, got to hand it to Florida and DeSantis for pushing the envelope on monoclonal antibodies for everybody. Um, I would love to, but we've been pushing the envelope ourselves here in Louisiana. LSU Health has been a huge player in this. That's, I mean, I know DeSantis gets all the Fox News headlines, but there's been no shortage of, uh, of, of testing and being bold in treatment and, and pre- prescribing that treatment. Here. Kill the mics, please. Thank you. Hey, it's Brian. Doing all right. We're going to be coming out of a break here in just a minute. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your first name right. Pronounce it for me. Brielle, okay. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Absolutely. And what's your title over at the Downtown Business Association? Okay. Good deal. Coming your way in just a sec. Hang tight.
838, Talk 107.3 FM, WBRP, live after 5 is back. Going to get to that in just a second. Do need to remind you, though, Talk 107.3 is giving you a chance to enjoy a true Louisiana staycation on us at either the Renaissance or Watermark Hotels. Simply take our staycation survey at talk1073.com. You will be instantly registered for one of two staycations each month at either the Watermark or the Renaissance. We draw for two winners a month, one on this show, one on the Jay Cody show. It's a staycation with the Watermark and Renaissance Hotels and Talk 107.3, the new flavor of talk. By the way, uh, our August winners, Angelique Holtman won at the Watermark. That gets her a one-night stay with valet and dinner for two at the Gregory. And Donna Montanino was our winner for the Renaissance, which includes a one-night stay with breakfast for two and dinner for two at Tallulah. So that Watermark would be a great place to crash after, uh, after live after five, which is back as of this week. Joining us now to talk about that is Brielle Edmonds. She's coordinating the concerts. Brielle, welcome to Talk 107.3. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. No, glad to have you on here. Glad to have Live After 5 back. It has been a downtown staple for, gosh, I mean, it, how many years has Live After 5 been in effect for I now? Wanna, I want to say it's been like 20. Yeah, like, it's got to yeah. be getting close to that for sure. Uh, and mm-hmm. then you know, the pandemic, obviously doing what the pandemic has done and pushing everything either canceled or back uh and now live after five is back as of this week so before we get to the lineup what can folks expect uh when they return will there be anything different that we need to be on the lookout for um as far as differences they're all truly covid related we're going to have uh, sanitation stations set up throughout the event but it, it will be everything that everybody has come to love and know about live after five live music food vendors, artists, um, and, of course, it's free to the public. I assume same location as before? Yes, sir. Correct. Excellent. That's on at the, at the foot of North Boulevard, basically behind the old state capitol if you've not been. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you've not been, I recommend checking it out. Like Brielle said, we're going on 20 years of Live After Five concerts. I've been a fan of this series ever since they were, like, in the middle of the road on 3rd Street. Exactly, yeah. Galvez Plaza. Galvez Plaza is the technical name. Yes, it, it's Galvez Plaza is behind, like, kind of wedged in between the old state capitol and City Hall. Uh, Correct, yes. Is where you're going to want to be. All right, so who's on the rundown? Who's on the lineup? So for the first concert, we actually have two bands. Uh, we're partnering with the Baton Rouge Blues Fest, and we're having Curly Taylor as the first band and Erica Falls as the second. They're both uh, blues and soul musicians. The following week, we have the Sean Ward experience. He's a funky, hip-hop, kind of soulful musician. We have After Eight, which is a, a local, awesome party cover, funk rock band. We also have Fat Hat, another funky, soulful party cover band. We have the Werewolf Costume Party Band, which is another party cover band that plays a lot of 80s music. That's going to be the 29th of October. Um, and that's going to be a costume party. So we encourage everybody to dress up for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then um, the final concert will be the Mixed Nuts, which is another party cover band. And that's going to be uh, the last concert in November on the 5th. Now, normally, on, I love the Mixed Nuts, by the way. Werewolf's un- underrated, by the way. I, 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 mm-hmm. I've been seeing them for years as well. They're so much fun. They mm-hmm. are a lot of fun with the costumes and everything else. It's kind of like in that genre of Molly Ringwald's Bag of Donuts type of thing. Uh, yeah. Werewolf. Fall, falls right into there uh, with, with the rest of them, with the best of them. Um, now, oftentimes with the Live After Five lineup, I'm hearing a lot of party bands mentioned, but oftentimes you all try to hit a different genre of music every week. With regrouping in the wake of COVID-19, has this just been a matter of grab what you can? No, I think a lot of these bands um, have been previously booked for, you know, this is our first time coming back in two years. Right. So I think a lot of these bands had been previously booked and, you know, we're just moving them forward to this season when we okay. can finally have, have them. Okay. Got to make updates for the ones that had to have been canceled in the past. Um, exactly. Along, along with this lineup here, uh, I, I assume that, uh, I mean, you're running now through, what was it, the second week of November? Is that when the last one is? It's the first week, yeah. First week, so in, sorry, Friday, November 5th, yes. Correct, yeah. Um. That's about the normal end time for the concert series. Is that is are we basically back on schedule with this series? We are essentially back on schedule. We did um, plan uh, uh, an extended season for the fall, twelve consecutive Fridays. Uh, whenever we had to cancel the spring season, we just kind of lumped them together. But then, due to rates rising, we 
we cut out the first six sponsors. And yeah. so this is basically the last half of what we had planned for the fall. But yeah, we're back on schedule and, you know, hopefully if everything goes well, we'll be able to continue in for seasons to come. That no chance of tacking some back on the back end of this, huh? Uh, you know, I think that there have been conversations, but I can't say for sure. Okay, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to back you into a corner on that. But uh, <laughs> for for those that have never experienced live after five, give me give me the pitch here. Tell me what folks can expect when they go downtown. Well, it's it's a huge outdoor area. There's plenty of space for everybody to spread out, and you know, people bring tapestries and chairs and they kind of just park and sit and chill and enjoy the music we have a wide variety of food vendors there will be a bar on site we actually are starting up again something called an artist's alley which will feature local artists that's going to be in the grassy area across from the library library um, across north boulevard Mm -hmm. so local art local food vendors a bar live music and plenty of space to dance and hang out and chill and just spend a Friday evening in Baton Rouge. Now, what's the vibe been like with the Downtown Business Association? Because, you know, it, it gets to be cliche that everything's different with COVID, but everything is different with COVID. I, have, have we seen the same level of, um, I, I guess, participation wouldn't be the right word, but those that congregate downtown, are we able to grasp that yet, or is it still just up in the air? You know, to be honest with you, I think, everything right now is still kind of up in the air. I think that there are a lot of people who are hesitant to gather, hesitant to to show up and to do the things that they're used to doing. But, you know, I think with this event being um, all outdoors and, and having we us having so much space to provide to people, um, we're, we're trusting that the crowds will show up and downtown will be lively again for Live After Five. Yeah, I, for every person that's hesitant about it, there's there's probably two more who are just chomping at the bit to get out there. Ready. We're just ready. Yes, absolutely. And the number of folks who I, this is just a guess here, the number of folks who are going to go out but not get close to anybody to start off with and then, like, just want to kind of test the water, you know? It, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we do, we do ask uh, guests to, whenever they're in line, for food or for the bar or any other vendor, we, we are going to ask them to to mask up or if they're going to get grab some beer or if they're going to be in the vip area you know we are asking them to mask up and of course there's going to be sanitation stations around the event but other than that um the the huge outdoor space i think will will make people feel comfortable and safe yeah yeah outdoors you can get a little distance in between you and somebody else you can spread those mm-hmm. tailgate chairs out a little bit uh, exactly. and make the most of what's going to be a gorgeous evening in, in downtown baton rouge yeah, we're expected to have great weather throughout the entire season, honestly. So we're really looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Made to order. Like, you couldn't have picked a better week to get started. Seriously. Brielle Edmonds, uh, coordinator or co-coordinator with the Live After Five Downtown Concert Series. Thank you so much for hopping on board today. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. We'll see you out there Friday evening uh, for Live After Five. Going to be a condensed concert series this year, which, you know, we understand. Everybody understands. Um I tell you what, the Sean Ward experience, which is actually next week's, if you've not yet seen him, uh, it's it, it's this weird fusion. It's like funk, hip hop, R and B, um, with like it's not techno. I, I wouldn't know else, how else to put it. You just go, you're gonna you're gonna love it. I, I've I've seen him out there before. He was really good. Uh, you get the Blues Axe this week, uh, Curly Taylor and Erica Falls. And like she said, it's uh, at Galvez Plaza, which is directly behind the Old State Capitol. I highly recommend like parking somewhere further up 3rd Street or you know, convention. Um, uh, make your trek to where after the concerts are over with, you're walking back on up 3rd in order to get to your vehicle. That's, that, that's the best way to do it. That way you can stop off for a drink or a bite to eat anywhere along any of the venues along 3rd Street. That is not until Friday evening, though. So we'll get there. We'll circle back on that before the week is out. We got a little more ground to cover on the show today. I mentioned to you that we were going to get to this in our last segment. I might open the door for it right now. If you are tubing down the Amy River, or any river for that matter, how much do you adhere to safety regulations The folks in Livingston Parish have been working on making things safer along the river. There have been 
dozens of rescues along, I shouldn't say dozens, at least a dozen rescues along the river this year alone, this summer alone, because of tiki tubing or, or folks not behaving the way they should, the river being too high oftentimes. You get dangerous water plus alcohol and a bunch of rednecks being doing redneck things. I'm not judging. I'm in that same category with you. You get it, you know, you fire down a couple beers, maybe some shots of fireball, and it's, hey, y'all, watch this in a hurry. Again, not judging. I'm probably the one shouting that. Would wearing a life jacket change your tiki tubing experience? Would having to watch an educational video change your experience? And if you're slamming back fat tires or, 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 or juicifers all day long, are you looking at signs posted along the side of the river? I tell you what, we got one minute till we check your money now. We'll check traffic again before we get out of here as well. But when we come back, I want to take a look at what they're trying to get done. And I'm not being judgmental of this committee either. They've got an impossible task in front of them, right? Standing in the way of the, hey, y'all watch this. But that being said, we've seen a number of rescues. We saw two people die this year on that river. How do you make it safer effectively without ruining the fun, for one, but by doing things that people will actually adhere to? We'll walk down that path in just a minute. we got to check your money now here coming up in about uh, 10 seconds from right now. Like I said, one more check of traffic before we get out of here. Not that bad in town, but in the peripheral areas, in the areas around the outside of town, might run into some problems. We'll check that next. Thank you. Please put a graphic up. Who am I looking at? Thinking out loud. I, I'm watching something on Good Morning America, and I have no idea who this group of women is that are singing. It just says Broadway is back in the bottom left-hand corner. It doesn't tell me, like...
LSU Riley Center's racism dismantling the system season opener to cover anti-Asian American Pacific Islander racism. What? Do I want to interview somebody about this? I do not. Yes, that makes me anti-Asian American racist. Forest landowners following natural disasters. I might need to follow up on that. Follow up on that one. Follow up on that one. See if I can get an interview on this one. Sorry, y'all. Wednesdays get busy with meetings, so. Districting right now. Hewitt versus Helix Energy Solutions. Recent decision by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit bah, 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 deemed a highly competent employee eligible for overtime payments. The ruling now. Only- Bored. Bored already. U.S. Attorney Ellison C. Travis announced the Middle District of Louisiana received $16 million from the Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs, Office of Victims of Crime, Enhanced Crime Victim Services, and that might be worth following up. Eight fifty six. Talk one zero seven three FM WVRP. One segment to go here on mornings with Brian Haldane. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning. I uh, greatly appreciate it. Okay, so there's a committee in Livingston Parish that's been gathered to discuss how to make things safer while you're tubing. I went over this story three or four times last night, and and the more I read it, the more I think they are tasked with the impossible. Let, let, let's just read from. Uh, This is WBRZ, Johnson Von Springer, on the call. As the season for tiki tubing along the Amy River widens down, discussion and potential action on how better to protect those using that waterway and others in the parish is ramping up. Quote, in the future, everybody understands what hazards exist, so when they get in the tube, it's more than just signing a piece of paper, Councilman Gary Talbert said during a virtual meeting of the Ordinance Committee Tuesday evening. Now, this meeting was the second time the committee discussed river safety in the wake of dozens of tiki tubing rescues and two drownings over the summer. Committee members appear to nail down three areas of focus for a new ordinance, mandatory life vests for all tubers, other river goers as well, signage along river routes, and an activity-specific educational video. Quote, heck, we put mile markers on the interstate so you have some idea where you are, Talbert said when discussing the need for signs along the waterways. There probably needs to be some identification on the river to let you know you're a quarter of the way through, halfway through. You're at the one-hour mark, the two-hour mark, the three-hour mark. Now, the video committee members, I'm sorry, the video committee members want to be played ahead of activities should include the do's and don'ts on the river, but also the consequences of not following instructions, Talbert says. Quote, they show you a video before you jump out of a plane. 
They show you a video before you go whitewater rafting. They show you videos for bungee jumping before they get in that tube. They'll know what's expected and what the hazard is. Lisa Hilliard, wife of uh, Keith Hilliard, who drowned during a tubing trip over Father's Day weekend, says she and her family were not given the opportunity to know the hazards along the river. She showed appreciation for the steps being taken Tuesday night, but added she wants to see more, including guides to lead tubers, which actually might be part of the equation. In fact, I think Lisa might have the best idea so far. It'll up the cost for sure. But here's the thing. Go back to that quote from, uh, from uh, Councilman Talbert. They show you a video before you jump out of a plane, They show you a video before you go bungee jumping. You know what you don't do before you jump out of a plane? Pour a glass of Jim Beam and Coke. Fire back about half a dozen Miller lights. Like, part of the fun of tubing on the river for most that go out there, I shouldn't say most, for a lot that go out there, is throwing an ice chest in one of the tubes and drinking your way down the river. What if you could designate one person, hiring that person, to make sure that they've got things handled? They know the route. They know where the snags are. They know where the low ground is, where the deep spots are. They can know what the current is ahead of time. And, oh, by the way, if you're doing signage, let's talk depth and current as well. Might be time to dial in on this spot. You'll get back to a shallower spot later on. Ah, we're just straight up out of time. Anyway, they're tasked with the impossible, and I appreciate their effort. Here comes the Fox News Rundown. All right, you know what, uh, YouTube, I'm not done. If you're going down the river, I'm not asking anybody to not drink because you're going to lose half the appeal of what's going on there. Plus, you're asking Tiki Tubing to do the impossible. Well, not the impossible, but start policing all the ice chests and be the hall monitor? No. There's no way we can't take what's already there Take the fun that's already there, the the things we've grown up on, and yes, you want to eliminate fatalities. You show me any other recreational business out there that's going to show me two deaths in one year, and I'm going to show you a place that's shut down. Two people drown over the course of the summer, and people are like, well, it happens. Like, there's got to be a middle ground here somewhere. Lisa Hilliard's suggestion about having, for lack of a better term, a chaperone, I mean, a guide, that's a solid one. It's 2021. Can we not have something that gauges the current as part of the signage? I I get you want to know when you're going, you know, when when you're one mile into the trek, when you're halfway through the trek, when you're passing Old Man Dithers' abandoned warehouse. Like, you want to know all these things, sure. But what I want to know even more than that, we're at a deep part right here. River's moving fast today. If you're going to dial it in, you need to dial it in now. There's a sandbar up over there. You'll be fine if you need to, you know, dial it back out again. But right now, focus up. If I know depth and current, I can fixate on that. Anyway, they have recommendations out, and we'll see where it goes from here. I'll see if I can't get somebody on the show to talk about how much further they are down the road. One of the takeaways from the story was... Councilman Tracy Gerlinghouse says, if we try to get it perfect the first time, it could take forever. We could put some things in place relatively quickly, quickly, and this will work toward what we can do. I'm with them. I'm with them. All right. That's going to do it for today. Crime Stoppers tomorrow. Patty G tomorrow. And... Uh, oh, Sean Wilson. Heads up Department of Transportation to Louisiana. It's time to get caught up on infrastructure and transportation, uh, the bill up on the hill, and what's going on in our own backyard. So Sean Wilson tomorrow as well, plus a couple more surprises in store, one of which is we dive back into the uh, murder mysteries on A&E. This time, the Chippendales murders. Yeah, I know. I don't know anything about it yet. I'll read up on it before we get there. We'll see you tomorrow.